It was night and the lights were on. The man came over and said that they had brought their luggage with them, after which he asked if she wanted to check in today. The guy with the briefcase and luggage said that he just got off the train and was redirected to a temporary job in this city. A man with luggage and another were walking through the alleys. The guy with the luggage said he'd let you know exactly when he checked in tomorrow. The man in the shirt said that he was damn lucky to have met him, after which he said that the apartment was definitely worth the money. After which, they came to a door that had a lamp almost torn off on top of it. The man with the luggage looked at it uncertainly and said that this building looks like no one has lived there for 20 years. The man in the shirt smiled and told him not to worry and to take his bag safely and go into the apartment. He said that it was absolutely clean and the payment for a month's stay was only 600 yuan. They opened the door and went inside. The house didn't look very comfortable, and there were two mopeds parked next to it. The guys came in, and the man in the shirt told him to trust him. He trusted him because the real estate representative whose name was Yuang, after which he said that he would be completely satisfied. The guy with the luggage said that he believed that it was possible to live there, since he only had to stay there for two months. They entered the entrance and started up the stairs. Yuang started to slam the door behind him and looked towards the guy with a frightening look. They closed the door, and the guy said he could go as soon as they gave him the key. Ewing said that he would not detain him any longer and gave him the key. The guy thanked him for everything and apologized for contacting him in the middle of the night. The guy started walking into the apartment and Ewing said that he would bring the rental agreement tomorrow, then wished him a pleasant stay. The guy said that the sooner this happens, the better, since he still had to send a report. Ewing closed the door behind the guy and looked down frighteningly. Ewing smiled and said that this apartment was finally rented out after which he began to cry with happiness. Ewing was very happy that right at the end of the month, he didn't expect to get the bonus anymore, but thanks to the guy withdrawing it, he got it right. He looked away, smiling, and said that he was very glad that they had come here at night, otherwise the deal would have been in jeopardy because of the old woman who lived nearby. Ewing recalled the old lady saying that there was a ghost in this apartment. After that, Ewing went downstairs and said that she was probably just superstitious and believed in such things. He began to descend and said that such things simply could not exist in their world. Just as Ewing started to descend, two hands appeared from behind him, hovering in the air, and about to grab him, followed by a thud. After that, we are transported to the guy's apartment. He was lying on the bed, looking very tired. Outside the window at this time was a strong dodge. A girl was also looking out of the window. The guy tried to fall asleep, but he felt something dripping on his face. The guy was asleep and scratched his face, then lay back down. After that, more and more drops dripped on the ground, and a dark silhouette appeared in front of him. Outside, a thunderstorm thundered and the rain didn't stop. A dark silhouette with long fingers and long hair that spilled all over the room stood over the guy. After that, we hear someone tell the man to wake up. After that, the guy was told that he would not be able to wake someone up in this way, after he said that he would demonstrate how to wake people up. A blow rang out and Ewing was slapped in the face. He looked around the place where he was and saw a strange grandmother who was staring intently at him. Ewing started shouting and crying, waving his arms and telling her not to come near him. The grandmother looked in the officer's direction and said that the guy had woken up. Afterward, Ewing said it was just grandma. He said she tried to scare the hell out of him by getting so close. Ewing held his face and said that he was in pain, after which he started asking them what had happened in the first place. The officer began to write down the information in a notebook and said that in general terms, he understood what had happened in general. The officer looked at Ewing and said that in other words, after he finished all the business with the client, he didn't know who pushed him down the stairs. Ewing stood up and said that it was a pity that there are no surveillance cameras in such an old building, as they would immediately know who did it. Ewing then looked at his grandmother, who was still staring at him intently, and asked why she was looking at him so intently. She looked at him and asked if the money had clouded Ewing's vision. After that, she asked him why he still brought people here. Ewing looked at her and asked what year this grandmother lives in. Afterward, he said that even if she said it to his client, he still wouldn't care. Grandma started yelling at him and was annoyed that Ewing had the nerve to say such a thing. After which, she said that the guy who checked in was killed because of Ewing. Ewing was shocked by this. He started asking them if he was really dead. He was told that he had died in the cursed apartment that Ewing had put him in. People gathered near the scene, and they started spreading rumors. Who? One of the crowd said that he heard that the guy had a heart attack. The people stood and watched everything that was happening. Which? That guy in a jacket with white hair and yellow eyes thought to himself that he didn't feel any aura or demonic power at all. He said it would be difficult, after which he stretched out his hands in front of him and squeezed them. He said that he could only hope for the golden eye of the underworld, after which it began to emit a bright light and his eye glowed yellow. 
After he activated the underworld eye, he began to see through everything. He saw people staying in their apartments and officers removing evidence from the scene. The guy with the bright eyes looked and realized that the investigation was not bearing fruit, after which he said that the guy was very problematic. The guy with the gray hair said that if it was too easy, he would have been bored by now. After that, the guy became alert and turned around. He saw a child who was eating candy and then he asked about the gestures of the guy who activated his eyes. The guy was wary because he thought that he was discovered, and it turned out to be an ordinary child. The kid asked the guy if he was a fan of Naruto. After that, the child began to snot, and he ate them with candy. The guy with yellow eyes was shocked with this situation. The happy child said that he also knew ninjutsu, and told him not to blink. After which, he started folding the seals in his hands as the guy stood and watched the whole awkward situation. The guy who stood and watched all this realized that the child was amazing after him. He said that he had better stop doing this as soon as possible, otherwise he would beat him up. After that, the child folded the seals, and with a confident look said the technique of water flow and spat out candy with saliva, while the guy jumped up to the roof. The child looked around and called out to the guy, after which he began to look around for his lollipop. The child was upset and said that he should have shared it with a classmate at school. The guy jumped on the roof of the house with a lollipop in his hand and told the annoying little guys that what he just used was not ninjutsu at all. After which, he threw out the lollipop and said that it was Taoism. The guy got up and started thinking about the whole situation. He knew that the guy wasn't found even after three groups of people searched for him. The guy who had waited here for all five days didn't see anything. Even the golden underworld gaze of the guy here couldn't find a trace of demonic aura. The guy pulled up his hood and said that if he didn't reveal his true identity, then the campaign would have to destroy an entire building to lure him out. The guy said he just needed to come up with a plan to catch Tom and give him a thrashing. After that, the guy raised his hands to his face, and they began to sparkle with blue lightning. The golden eye of the underworld that the guy used had strong search and assist ability, and it could also be used to observe the sole color of the surrounding spirits. The blue color corresponded to an ordinary person. The white light matched the dead people. The yellow color corresponded to people who looked like the main character. Red was also the color of demonic spirits. After that, we are transferred to the next day in Yong in real estate. Ewing sat behind the chair and couldn't believe that the guy had died because of a heart attack. He didn't understand what his fault was. He didn't understand why he was asked to leave a statement. Ewing was saying that his day was wasted because of this whole incident. Then a girl entered the building. Yungin said that he was very unlucky, and this month he might not expect a bonus. The girl came in and said hello. Ewing turned around and greeted her with a smile, and asked if the girl was looking for a place to live or rent or buy. After which, Young Ho was captivated by the girl. The girl was standing in front of him in a yellow tank top and skirt, and on her head were pins in the form of eyeballs. She said she wanted to rent a haunted apartment. Ewing sat and stared at the girl's large chest. Young Ho was shocked from that. He meant in that apartment last night. The guy died of a heart attack but the girl interrupted him and said that she already knows everything about it. Young Ho sat there and didn't understand why she still wanted to go there. The girl smiled and said that she wanted to hold her broadcast there. Young Ho sat there in shock. It occurred to him that girls these days loved money more than their own lives. At night, they went to the apartment, and the girl thanked Yungin and asked him to give her the keys. Young Ho said that then he would not go up and go straight from here, after which he wished the girl good luck and told her to be careful. The girl entered the apartment and stood in front of the door in the apartment. The girl assumed that this was the bedroom in which the previous owner of this apartment died. The girl went into the bedroom and sat down at the table that was next to the bed and threw her briefcase on it. The girl said that in any case, the first thing you need to eat your fill and then brewed instant food. The girl ate it and did not understand who created this food because it was very tasty. After which, a dark-colored hand reached out from under the table, reaching towards the girl's feet and about to grab her. After that, the girl abruptly remembered something and moved her legs to get up from the chair, and the hand passed by her legs. The girl got up from the table and ran to the bed in her bag as she completely forgot that she was the only one in this room and she should be scared, after which she took out a poster of a man who was holding a CD in his hand. The girl picked up the poster and admired it. She said he was a modern rising internet star. She took the man's poster and pasted it on the bedroom door. The girl said that she did it so that he guarded her door, after which she pasted another poster with the same man on the window so that he would drive away all evil spirits. After that, the light in the apartment went out, and the girl looked up and assumed that it was a short circuit, after which she looked in fright in the direction of the closet, the door of which was slightly ajar, and from there came an ominous and terrible laughter. The girl stood in front of this cabinet, and asked who was there. 
The girl took her briefcase with a teddy bear keychain and said that she has everything to fend off unpleasant personality. After that, the girl began to go to the closet with her briefcase and told the one who was there right there to come out of there. The girl was scared when she saw the green light in the closet. She saw a green light, and then an unknown entity came out of the closet with green eyes. The girl looked in the direction of the closet and said that she understood where it was, after which she reached out to open the closet door. The girl opened the closet door and said that now it was his turn to show up, after which she took out her briefcase from where someone was calling. A bright look emerged from the briefcase. The girl pointed the briefcase in the direction of the black silhouette, after which it began to glow with a bright orange light. A raven with long and sharp claws flew out of the briefcase. It flew straight towards the dark silhouette that was in the closet. After the bird flew into the closet, the girl slammed the door and held it so that he would not run out. While the girl was holding the closet door, someone inside started yelling at her to open the door and let him out. The girl looked with a stern look, after which the closet door exploded and the girl jumped back. The girl took the briefcase and told Bag Kun to come back, after which the bird flew into the briefcase. She caught it in her briefcase and zipped it up. She put on her briefcase and said that her precious ova was a clawed raven that could make any demon reveal its true identity. After that, the girl asked why don't the demon hurry up and get his ass out to her. The demon slowly began to come out to her. It extended its long and black clawed hand and completely exited the closet and walked towards the girl. He stood in front of her and told her that he would eat the girl alive. The demon stood over the girl and was many times bigger than her. After which, it opened its mouth and was ready to eat the girl completely. But the girl just took it and gave him a bream in the face. The demon was shocked from that. The girl asked why this demon was still acting cool by making all these screams and screams he was bothering the neighbors the girl said and started beating up this demon. She slapped him across the jaw, sending him flying to the far corner of the room. He fell to the ground. Then the girl started squeezing her chest and said that she couldn't move properly because of her very large size. The demon looked in her direction and asked who she was. The girl looked at him and said that he probably was right. After that, the girl looked at him and smiled. She said that she was 100% sure that he was just a low-level spirit without any real attacking power, which also explained that he couldn't discern his true identity through disguising himself as a girl. After that, he stretched out his hand and drew a circle with blue light and told me to remove my disguise. After which, it began to emit light lights and a black sphere was formed in front of it, which was sealed in a yellow shell. The demon stood there in shock. The guy took this shell and said that he was from Yao Zhengxi, the Tang Ka demon hunting champion of Liu San City. Tang Ka was the guy who watched the apartment with his golden underworld gates. The demon looked at him and couldn't believe that he was from Yao Zhengxi. Tang Ko looked at him and said that since he had managed to hide his demonic aura, he thought that the demon might have been a lust spirit. Afterward, Tang Ko said that he was ashamed and said that he didn't need to play the busty girl. Tang Ko looked at him and said that his golden underworld eye hadn't detected him, so he could tell that his ability to hide was much better than that guy's. After that, Tang Ko said that he could finish off this demon with just one finger. After that, the evil spirit smiled and said that if Tang Ko said so, then let him try to find him first, after which fire came out of him and the spirit did not understand what was happening to him. Tang Ko looked at him confidently and said that his clawed raven could make any demon or spirit show their true appearance. After that, the spirit started to run away, then he said that he can't just be caught by this kid. The spirit said that he hadn't waited for her to return yet, and then he said that he would definitely come back. The spirit approached the poster and touched it. After that, the spirit received a powerful charge. Tang Ko said that he couldn't just run away from here. Tang Ko said that there was a talisman behind the poster. Tang Ko said that this spirit was weaker than he expected, as a simple talisman was able to restore it to its true form. Tang Ko came up to him and told him that he was really just a little brat. After which, Tang Ko received the Kun Bag card and Nan Spirit. The Kun Bag was known as the Kun Kyan Bag. It was used to store items, and a special dimension was stored inside. Nan's spirit was made using a special measurement skill, and synthetic leather. It could be used on humans and on demonic spirits, which gave the power to transform into anyone. The storage capacity is 125 cubic meters. After that, a small creature with red eyes and a long hairdo emerged from the sinister-looking demon. He stood and looked in Tang Ka's direction and cried. Tang Kak walked up to him and gave him a flick, then told him that he was just a little brat. After the tank, he said that he was not as bold as he was before. Tang Kak said that there wasn't a spirit in the world that he couldn't handle. The little demon took hold of the head where the lump was and said that he couldn't leave this place because it hadn't returned yet. Tang Kak asked who he was talking about. Tang Ka told Tom that he was scaring everyone away just to wait for her to return. The demon sat there and said it was all true. 
He said that they lived in the ancient era, but because they were weak and timid by nature, the only way for them to survive was to hide. However, few people could catch them. They were recruited by Yao Zhangxi and were supposed to gather information about other demonic spirits. They didn't expect that with the support of people, their lives would become a little safer. They didn't expect the other demons to ruthlessly destroy their species. After they find out that they worked with people, they all needed to be assigned one mission. But they didn't know much, in the end it turned out to be a trap, and he was the only one who was able to survive. Since he was badly injured, he hid in the closet and slept for God knows how long. Tang Ka sat there and said that he had asked something completely different. The demon said that after he woke up, the world changed dramatically with the appearance of giant monsters with metal skin, strange-looking tall buildings that were closely pressed together. The demon said it was like he was suffocating. He said that all the people did not want to sleep even at night. They were constantly yelling and shouting and making unnecessary noise. The demon said that humans are really terrible. After that, he hid back in the closet until the man found him. It was a blind, lonely grandmother. Since she was also without companions, she picked him up and took care of him like a kitten. He felt safe with her. But one day the old woman collapsed on the floor. Even though she didn't suffer any injuries, she refused to move even an inch, no matter how much food he put in her mouth. Then a few days later she was taken away. Then he began to wait for her to wake up and come back to him. The demon sat and cried as he told it. Tang Ka sat and listened to the whole story in silence. The tearful demon said that a very long time had passed and she still hadn't returned. The demon wanted to tell him something again. But Tang Ka shut him up and told him to stop talking. Tang Ka said that he was annoying and opened the phone, after which he said that they would now check who he was. Tang Ka opened the app and pointed at the demon. He told him to stand still and not move. The demon started walking away from the camera and asked what it was. Tang Ka studied the demon and the app gave him the final result. The result showed that it was Dan Wang, which was considered an extinct species. The demon was shocked that the app was talking. The app said that the extinction period supposedly belongs to the Beijing period. The reason for the extinction is the hunt for them by other demonic spirits. Tang Ka said that the reward for the mission was only 2,000. He said that it would be very nice to grab it, because he had hit the jackpot. Tang Ka looked at the demon with shining eyes and said that he had caught an extinct demonic spirit, and such things are very expensive on the black market. The demon began to cry and realized that he wanted to sell it on the black market. The demon began to struggle and yell for him to let go. Tang Ka held it up and said that even though it was worth a lot, he wouldn't sell it. Afterward, Tang Ka said that that grandmother wasn't going to come back, so from now on, he would never be lonely, scared, or helpless. The demon was crying and beaming with happiness. Tang Ka looked at him with a smile on his face and said that he would protect him and always be there for him. Tang Ka said that his name would now be Zio Hai. The demon was crying and happy that he now had a name. Tang Ka asked him if he was willing to accept the given name Zio Hai. The demon looked at him in tears and agreed. After which, Tang Ka took the red amulet and then sucked Zio Hai in. Zai Hai was placed in a red ball. He shouted for him to let him out. Zai Hai said that he knew he shouldn't have trusted the people from Yao Zhangxi. Zai Hai said that all people are liars. Tang Ka held the ball in his hand and said that everything was ready. He opened the app and decided to set the status of his mission. There were two statuses success and failure. Tang Ka said that it was time for him to go, after which he chose to fail the mission. After that, we are transported to the construction site where a man said that he was hungry and suggested that we go to Lantian Street and find something to eat. Who? He told them to go and see what old Zhuang had dug up. They thought they had dug up a treasure trove. They started taking out the thing they had dug up and said it was very heavy. They took out a jug that was tied with ropes. People stood and watched it all. They said it looked quite expensive. Who? One of the people said it might have been an antique. Who? One of the men said that he keeps pickles in the same jar, and the other said that it is a storage for alcohol. They said they wouldn't know until they did, and the other man told them to be careful because she was giving off an evil aura. The man walked over and tore off the paper that had something written on it. He opened the lid and started to see what was in there. Others stood aside and asked him what he saw there. The old man stood there and didn't answer them. They asked what had happened to him, and then they decided to go over and see for themselves. From this jar, something began to drip onto the old man's feet, after which the old man who opened the jar began to look like a dead man. Blood was coming out of his eyes and green light was visible from the pupils. After that, we get more cards in the case. Received a Dan Wen card and an embroidered cage. Dan Wing, they live by hiding in the swamps deep in the forests. They absorb the spiritual essence from the plant as food. They don't have any attacking skills, but they have excellent stealth and transformation skills. No one has the ability to detect them after activating the stealth skill. 
their stealth skill is considered the best among demons. They are estimated to have died out during the Beijong period. The embroidered cage is a tool that was used to capture ordinary demonic spirits. In order for a demon to be trapped in an embedded cage, one of two conditions must be met. The demonic spirit must be severely injured and hold on to its last breath. The demonic spirit trusts the hunter and is not afraid of him. After that, we are transported to the girl who rode on a red motorcycle and constantly repeated that she was late. Then she complained that it was now. She was racing very fast on her motorcycle and said that she fought very hard for this deal. She said that in five minutes she would finally get to where she was going. She stepped on the gas and sped off. She said that she was very lucky that now the road was just empty. She said that if she hurried, she could do it. But then the girl became wary and lost control of the control. After that, she flew off the bike and fell to the ground. She hit her head on the asphalt and her helmet cracked as she rolled and tumbled on the ground. She landed next to her motorcycle and her helmet flew away from her. She left a lot of blood on the asphalt and lay alone in the rain on the road. She didn't know what she'd hit because the road was completely empty. She looked and saw that there was no one on the road. Then she started to hear footsteps and someone stepped on a puddle. An invisible monster was heading towards her. After that, we are moved to the next morning. Who? He started shouting at Zhuang Zio ran to get up. The girl was banging on the door and shouting the man's name. She opened the door and said that it had been a long time, and she still hadn't even woken up. After that, she looked at the one as the girl lay in bed. She asked her where the help she had offered before moving was. The girl walked away and said that every day Zio woke up and came home very late. She turned away and said what her father had only taught her. The woman looked at her and said that she had so many relatives to go to. The woman didn't understand why Zio decided to become a leech here. She said that Zio is completely shameless, loitering around them idly. The woman then slammed the door. Zio was lying on the bed. After which, she got up and realized that she couldn't stay here any longer. Someday, she should ask another aunt if she has a spare room for her. She looked ahead and said that just a little more and she would save up enough to find that woman. She turned back and said that once she found her, she would make her regret leaving them so heartlessly. After that, she looked at the family photo, where the woman's face was drawn with a marker. Zao looked at her father and asked him to bless her for her wealth. After that, we see how the woman prepared breakfast. She said that her husband would eat. She looked at him and asked him why he hadn't told her how long it had been since she'd moved in. She said that the very short period associated with work had already been delayed for six months. The man kept looking at the phone and said that she was his niece. If he couldn't take care of her, then who would? The woman said that it must be so, but it doesn't look like she doesn't have any money. She must have already saved up a large amount for all the time that she worked here. The woman got dressed and told them to end this conversation as she gets annoyed when she talks about Zio. The woman put on her shoes and told him to go to work after breakfast while she went to the market to buy some things. The man continued to sit at the phone, after which he looked in the direction of the door and told her to go out since her aunt had just left. Zio came out with a smile and said good morning to her uncle. Zio said she swore she wasn't trying to make his wife angry. My uncle was still on the phone and told me that my aunt must be going through menopause. After which, he told Zio not to take it too personally. Her uncle told her to wash her face and sit down to breakfast. Zio went to the bathroom and started washing her face. Zio leaned down and her smiling uncle began to stare at her ass. Zio noticed that someone was standing there watching her. She looked back and said it was second uncle. My uncle said that he asked if there was anyone in the bathroom. But there was no answer, and then he said that he came here to get his dental floss. Zio looked at him and said that she would be so scared to die if he made his way to her so quietly at night. My uncle laughed and said that he would try to be more careful next time. Zio said that this was his thread and reached out to pass it to her uncle. Her uncle also reached out to her at that moment and said that Zio's hand was still wet, so he would take it. Her uncle snuggled up to her and told her that Zio's wet hair still smelled good. Zio didn't feel comfortable in such an environment. My uncle began to tell me how, as a child, he used to take Zio and play with her. Uncle said that Zio had grown so big very quickly, then he said that puberty was wonderful, and looked at her breast. The uncle looked in Zio's direction and said that he glanced at her phone and saw that she had an account for about 500,000. My uncle said that a young girl who comes home late every night must be doing naughty things. Her uncle looked at her and said that if she really needed money, he could help give it to her. Then he snuggled up to her. Zio walked out of the house and clutched her stomach. She came with her bags and said that she was very hungry, and then said that she had to eat something for breakfast before going out. Zio looked to the side and saw a happy family eating outside with a baby. The mother suggested that the child eat another spoonful, and the child was naughty and said that he wanted to play. 
Zio looked disappointed and told herself in her head to cheer up as she had to work hard and earn some money today. Zio's current income target was 1,000 yuan. After that, she came to the studio where she was photographed. Zio upgraded her modeling practice by 300 points, and then at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, she rushed to another place, pushing all the people apart while eating food at the same time. She came to a restaurant where she was dressed as a maid and served the guests. Zio leveled up her part-time maid skill by 350 points. After that, at 6 p.m., she asked an uncle to look after her luggage. The man told her to put it here, and then he asked her how long she would be doing the delivery. Zio said that she would do it until she earned some money. After which, she said goodbye to them and said that I'll see you later. The men wished her luck, and she took off on a motorcycle. The guy stood and told the master that she was very nice, after which he asked why she was engaged in delivery. The master looked at her and said that she was not only doing this, after which he told the guy that she also worked three jobs every day along the way. The guy stood and was in shock listening to everything that the master said. The master smiled and said that he himself did not know why the girl was driving herself so mad, but he was confident can say that she likes to ride a motorcycle, which is why she liked delivery, as it relieved her stress. After that, we are transported to Lantian Street. Tang Ka stood and ate the food, then thought about what to take next. Suddenly, a motorcycle pulled up nearby and Sayo stopped in front of the crowd. Tang Ka took the black compass and clicked on them. The needle started spinning and stopped, and then red lines came out of them. Tang Ka looked at them and said it was a bad sign. Tang Ka looked to the side and said to actually face what the master had mentioned to him when he was little for a bad omen. After which, he looked in the direction where all those red lines were going and saw that they were all coming from the Sayo girl who had arrived on a motorcycle. This meant that death was inevitable and beyond the control of any craft. After that, we get more cards in the case. Received the Black Compass card. The Black Compass allowed you to search for people, things, or demonic spirits. It also allowed you to solve a good or bad fate. Tang Ka closed the black compass and looked in the girl's direction. He knew it was too crowded and she would be hard to spot. Tang Ka understood that everyone had their own destiny, and he couldn't help even if he really wanted to. After that, he received a notification on his phone. Tang Ka took it and didn't understand what the hell such a huge request fee was for. A notification came to your phone. Urgent request of Ranka you have the right of first choice for this mission, would you like to accept it? Tang Ka was surprised by Ranke, after which he said that today was an extremely good day and smiled. After that, people shouted at the construction sites to hurry up because they were already here. All the people ran towards the jug. One of the workers asked who was blabbing all this. Another worker said that if he was here, then there was nothing stopping them from being here. They ran to a large urn. One of the workers asked where old man Juan and the others were, after which one of the workers said that there was something in front of the big urn. They were boots and the uniforms of the people who were near the urn. They were standing near the trash can and didn't understand where all the people who were there had gone, and they also didn't understand why their uniforms were lying there. After that, the black water in the urn began to gurgle. They went to the urn and noticed that there was something inside. They bent down to look and saw that something was floating up. After that, a head with black hair floated up from the jar, after which it jumped out of the jar, splashing all the water that was there. A dark shape began to hover in front of the workers. The workers looked up and didn't understand what it was, after which they stood in shock as there was a skeleton with black hair that was moving on the jar in front of them. After that, this skeleton looked at them and people started yelling and running away in different directions from this demon. The demon began to conjure a bright green charge from its mouth, after which it began to infect people with it. Some of the workers' eyes and mouths began to shine, after which people flew away from the skeleton's shockway. They flew off in different directions and were infected by that demon's attack. Leolai flew into one pile, and the skeleton created a circle from them, after which it began to raise it and infect people. The people who were in this circle began to peel off their skin and bleed everywhere, after which they were completely swallowed up by the darkness and completely disappeared, leaving behind their blood and their equipment. The demon completely consumed these people, after which it descended to the ground. His eyes glowed with a bright orange light. Then he stood up and spread his arms out to the sides. His body began to gradually build up armor. From head to toe in a couple of seconds he was covered with armor, and his spine stuck out on his back. It had grown a bone tail and was fully clothed in the armor it had just made. His face changed and now he had four bright eyes that glowed under his mask. After that, we again receive coffin nail cards to suppress the spirit. A desiccated corpse, a mummy. Coffin nails are an item that was used by villages of the past to exorcise spirits. It can also be used to seal evil spirits. Any spirit affected by it will not be able to do any evil or will be punished. The withered corpse is a spirit that was born as a result of the immense hatred and anger that consumed human souls. 
A mummy is one that evolved from a dried-up corpse that has accumulated hatred for over a thousand years, has an indestructible body, and a movement skill that can determine the state of mind of other creatures. The demon looked down at his hand and began to think. He didn't understand who he was or why he had turned into this. He stared intently at his hand, after which a drop fell on his palm. He looked at how another drop fell, and then it began to rain. After that, we watch as two men in the rain looked down, after which they took the body of a man by the legs and began to drag. They dragged the man's body away, then they took his hand, which was held tightly by one man, while another hammered nails into his hand, nailing it to the board. After which, the man took another nail and drove it into the man, smearing everything with his blood. After that, the man nailed to the board tried to raise his hand in the direction of the crowd of people who stood and cheered, watching the whole terrible picture. Behind this crowd, a man with a long and blonde hairdo was laughing from all over the place. He stood there and stood out very much from the crowd with his strange aura. After which, the demon that was covered in armor extended its arm and continued to watch her. He was standing among the things of those people and trying to say something unintelligible. But after that, he started shouting loudly and those nails that were hammered into him when he was a human and his back was completely covered in orange bright light. Then he started coughing up blood. He leaned forward and then fell to the ground as he lay on the ground and pondered. He realized that those copper nails that had been hammered into him did not allow him to absorb the essence, after which he became alert and realized that something was approaching him. The demon's eyes began to shine even more, and it activated its foresight ability. Throughout the area, it began to emit waves that began to grow and reach the entire area where the construction was being carried out, after which he foresaw that Tang Ka was running towards him. The demon was very nervous and said that even though he didn't know him, his instincts predicted that it would be better for him to run away from here. The demon got to his feet and said that his whole body was numb and he didn't even have the strength to walk. The demon assumed that his power was sealed by the nails that the humans had hammered in. The demon looked ahead and said that until he found that person, he absolutely couldn't just die here. The demon looked confidently ahead and said that the pain and suffering that he had experienced all these years, he would return them to the one who caused them, after which the demon scattered and jumped high with thoughts of quickly killing his enemy. The demon thought about it and said that even if it had to spend a thousand years or even ten thousand years, it would still find him and kill him, after which the demon rushed forward and saw a bright glow from the side, which shocked him. Zio Ran's motorcycle crashed into it. After that, we get another foresight card in the case. Precognition is a unique vision skill that mummies possess, allowing them to detect the soul and aura color of their target from a very long distance. The demon was thrown backwards and was trying to stand in front of the girl who had bumped into him. The demon looked ahead and thought that he had been ambushed by someone, after which he assumed that it was another person who wanted to catch him. The demon looked ahead and saw a woman lying on the ground next to the bloodstains. The demon assumed that it was obviously her who had ambushed him, but it looked like she had suffered serious injuries to her life. The demon looked in her direction and then assumed that a person with a powerful aura must be somewhere nearby, after which he assumed that he had come for him. The demon knew that in this state, he was definitely no match for him, so he had no other choice. After that, the demon got up and walked over to the girl who was barely opening her eyes, but she couldn't see the demon because she was an ordinary person. The demon crept up on her, after which Sayo said that she must be imagining what she was seeing, after which she began to slowly and gradually close her eyes. The girl was lying unconscious, and the demon took the locks of her hair and directed it towards the girl. The ends of the demon's hair shone a bright green color, and he took Sayo by the head. He wrapped his hair completely around the girl's body, after which he pulled her to him. After that, the demon's copper nails that had been hammered into its body fell away, and the demon itself disappeared from view. The demon shoved hair into the girl's wounds and entered her body and heart, after which it added its genes to hers and created its own life in her body. Then the girl opened her eyes, and they were black with yellow pupils. They were vertical, just like a cat's. After that, we are transferred to the construction site, where the demo recently staged a terrible massacre. We see the jug that he got out of. And then we see Tang Ka rushing to this place with incredible speed. He stopped and assumed that he was too late. Tang Ka turned around and saw a lone jug standing next to the workers' uniforms. Tang Ka turned around and realized that there wasn't a trace of life left on this construction site. Afterward, he realized that he had to find this monster sooner because it was able to deal with so many victims in just such a short time. After which, we hear something ringing, after which we are transported to the scene of Zio's accident. She got up and started walking slowly down the road. She continued on, giving off a scary evil aura. Her face completely changed. Her eyes turned black with a yellow pupil, and something like a bone mask appeared at the edges of her face. Next, we see the cat coming towards us. Zio was walking down the road after a rainstorm when she saw a cat nearby. 
Zio looked at the cat, who looked back at her. The cat had the same eyes as Zio, but in the eyes of the cat instead of Zio, he saw the true appearance of this demon, after which they parted, and the cat then began to growl and show its fangs. The cat began to think and said that he was very lucky to come across a mummy that appeared once every hundred years, after which the cat said that more importantly, it looked very weak. The cat understood that this was just a great chance to attack, after which it began to reincarnate. He watched the mummy from above and said that now he would find out if the legends about mummies were true. The cat said that if it swallowed the mummy, its spiritual aura would increase significantly. After that, a huge reincarnated cat attacked the mummy from behind. The mummy noticed this with her sharp eyes, after which she turned around and pointed her finger at him. After that, the back post was cut in half. The cat flew towards the mummy, after which there was a secant blow and cut it into two halves. The cat was shocked that even though the mummy had such a weak aura, it was still incredibly strong. The cat didn't believe that the mummy could cut it open with just one finger. The lower part of the cat flew off to the side and the front one was lying on the asphalt. The cat in the last moments of his life began to think and said that if he knew that everything would turn out this way, then he would just continue to hunt people. After all, he would have had food. Then the mummy said she was back. He looked up and said that his strength had completely returned to him. After merging with the girl, he finally got rid of all those small nails that he was forbidden to absorb the essence. He continued to look up and then smiled and said that he was going to try out this body in a more public place. The mummy bent down then with incredible force pushed off from the ground and flew into the air, leaving behind a destroyed asphalt and a shock wave. The mummy flew up and saw a big city ahead, and then he decided that he would go there and look at everything. After which, she flew into the city, flying past tall buildings. After that, the mummy landed on the roof of the house, leaving damage on it, and looked down. She saw there a crowd of people going about their business. The mummy saw them and saw their small children girls and men with modern clothes and technology. The mummy looked at all this and began to wonder how many years it had lain in that urn. He looked at the city and noticed that there are a lot of high-rise buildings now and the people here were so indecently dressed in contrast to his time when he was still alive. He looked at all of them. Then he clearly got angry and said that they should clearly be the descendants of those who caused him so much pain in his previous life. He looked at them, then started shouting angrily that he would make sure that their bloodline ended here, after which he started casting a green aura in his mouth. After that, most of the people clutched their throats and started to choke. After which, many people started to emit green light directly into the sky. These green lights flew towards the mummy and gathered into a large bright green fire that hovered above the mummy. After that, we watch as alarms start sounding everywhere in the huge tower. The screens were filled with information about the problem, after which a girl with huge breasts stood and watched it all. The girl was standing in the command center in front of multiple cameras and touch screens. The girl was extremely unhappy that this had happened right after she took over the command center. This girl's name was Han Long Kiwi. She had short black hair and mismatched eyes. Long looked ahead irritably and asked if this wasn't the job Tang Ka had taken on. Then she would ask him where he was at that moment. Long started biting her fingernail and said that with his current location, he wouldn't be able to get to the scene in time. The girl continued to be nervous and said that she had no other choice but to ask the people from that world to deal with this problem. After which, a girl in a black suit ran up to Long. He ran and called out to Commander Long. She said that according to the statistics, all the residents of the Lanchal district would die within the next three minutes. The girl said that Tang Ka is the only one in the Jia-ranked Demonsity district. The girl said that she had already sent him the coordinates, but she was afraid that with his current location, he might not make it in time. Long looked in the girl's direction and said with a serious face that she should immediately inform the judicial department to contact the Hall of Defenders after which she told them to send two defenders to the scene. The girl in the suit looked at Loon warily and couldn't believe that she had ordered the defenders to be summoned. At this time, the mummy began to absorb all the essence that it gathered from a bunch of people. It could afford to do so because now the copper nails did not interfere with it in any way because they were not there. The mummy completely absorbed the essence, after which it turned around and saw a red seal, from which a dark silhouette that was directly on fire emerged. Two protectors wearing white armor and a mask with a big smile painted on it came out. They looked in the direction of the mummy and one of the protectors asked the other that they were called here because of a certain demonic spirit. The larger defender asked the other if they were overreacting enough to challenge the two of them to such a task. The other defender looked at them and told him to be careful, because according to the reports that people sent them, their target was a mummy. They said it's been a couple of hundred years since they last appeared, and this one is still a woman so it's going to be a bit difficult to deal with. The big defender stepped forward and said that he would go and check on her, number three. After that, he rushed to the mummy. 
Then he became wary, because the mummy looked at him and her eyes began to shine very brightly. After that, the mummy jumped up from its seat and attacked the approaching defender with its knee right in the face. The defender flew back to his partner, who continued to stand calmly in his place. The defender almost fell off the roof, but he was stopped by the fence that was standing there. The defender who was smaller stood still, after which the mummy closed the distance with him and was going to attack him. After which the mummy looked at him and said that he looked much stronger than the bully who flew at her immediately into battle, and snatched her away. Then the mummy hesitated. She immediately jumped away from the protector and started casting green essence in her mouth. She began to release back all the essence she had absorbed. After that, we see a huge green pillar. Zio Zio started to wonder where she saw that pillar of light from, after which she assumed that someone was setting off fireworks. After that, Zio began to awaken, and instead of the mummy's eye, Zio's eye appeared. She didn't understand why her body was so hot, and why she couldn't move. She didn't know what was going on. The mummy started to panic. The mummy was disappointed that the girl was still conscious. Zio looked at her body, and was afraid that she couldn't move it. The mummy said that after working hard to escape, he managed to regain his strength. The protector looked at all this and like a mummy sat down on the ground. The protector didn't understand why the mummy spat out all the souls it was collecting. He didn't understand what her purpose was. The defender asked what was the result of number seven. The defender who flew into the fence sat down and said that judging from her recoil, her speed and strength were both Gia rank. Defender number three said that her speed was probably inferior to number seven. But as for the defense, number three went ahead and said that he would check it out now. The mummy said she still needed more souls, and he shouted for all those who stood in his way to die. After which, the mummy began to fight for Zio's body, and told the girl to get out of the way. After which Zio's eye began to gradually turn into the mummy's previous eye. After which, number three took a step and ran up to the mummy and launched an ice prison attack. The mummy ended up in the ice, then calmly looked at all this and destroyed the ice walls. She looked towards number three and said that no one would stop her. Number three moved back and number seven came up from behind to stab her in the back, after which the mummy flew forward to number three. Number three raised his sword and said attack, after which green sharp stones appeared above the mummies. The mummy looked at this attack in fright, after which they headed towards the mummy, after which it was grabbed by the black ink and it was squeezed completely by the ink spikes. The defenders stood and watched as she was completely enveloped by these attacks. The mummy stood up and said it was ridiculous. The defenders looked and found out that the mummy's defense was also of the Gia rank. The mummy's temper is worthy of its reputation said the defender. The mummy came out from under the rocks in a black robe wrapped around her body and said that with his weak abilities, he would never be able to defeat the mummy, after which she went to him to hit him with her hand. The protector told number seven that the preparation was complete and then he picked up a dark sphere with a symbol on it, after which the mummy realized that it couldn't move. After that, a field with seals and green lights was formed under the girl. It was a hidden seal, the double seal of heaven and earth. The mummy's strength began to leave her, after which she began to lose consciousness and then fell to her knees. The protector held his hands over the dark sphere and said that he could only keep it in this state for two minutes, after which he said that he had heard that only those who have committed extremely evil deeds or possess great hatred are able to become a mummy in a couple of hundred years. The defender was in shock and wondered what this monster had gone through to become so strong. After which, the protector suggested that it was likely that she had been cultivating for a thousand years. After all, even twelve earth chains can only bind her for two minutes. After that, the protector looked to the side and said that it would be troublesome. Even though she was unconscious, she had already entered a state of protective rest. The defenders understood that with the offensive power they could muster in this short period of time, there was basically nothing they could do about it. After that, we get the cards back in the case. We get Protective Peace Cards, Defender. Protective Rest is a unique defensive ability of the mummy. When activated, the host's body becomes incomparably strong and resilient in dangerous situations when losing consciousness. Its ability of Protective Rest is automatically activated, forming a protective layer, as a result of which the mummy is almost invulnerable. A Defender is a Defender from the Spirit City Defender Hall of Lant. He was in charge of maintaining the prison of Lanton Spirit City. Security, as well as for basic issues concerning both the human world and the spirit world. After that, the defender was asked how the combat situation was. He looked in the direction of the ship that flew up to him and said that even though it wasn't their job, human souls had already been released. The ship looked at them and asked, isn't it their job? He then asked the protectors how long it would take for these souls to return to their body. The defender turned away and said that, judging by the current situation, they would not be able to return. The ship asked what the defender was talking about. 
The protector grabbed his sword and said that they had suppressed the mummy, but without its death, these souls would not be able to return to their body. He looked in the direction of the mummy that was sealed and said that it had activated its protective piece, and if it didn't remove this seal, it would be impossible to kill it in any way. The protector said that they can only seal her for two minutes, and when the time runs out, even if they can defeat her in battle, it will take some time. And if the souls can't return to their bodies in time, then they know what the consequences will be. After that, the protector looked at the souls that were flying in the air. Loon stood in the office and chewed on her fingernail. She looked at the protector who was saying all this to the drone and asked if there was no other way. The defender looked ahead and said there was another way. Lun and the girl asked which way to go. After which, the protector looked ahead and said exile. Long looked up and was shocked by what the protector said. The girl in the suit assumed that the protector was talking about the heavenly inverted seal. She had heard from her colleagues that their headquarters had a mysterious relic from ancient times in their hands, which sealed a large number of demonic spirits, as a result of which humanity was able to remain dominant and controlling. She said that the place was known as the Third World, which was inhabited by a large number of demons. The girl looked at the floor and said that they should report it to headquarters if they really wanted to use it to seal the mummy. She said that without the approval of the higher-ups, even the commander couldn't do it. After which, Long looked at them and with a confident look told them to immediately begin their banishment. The girl in the suit was shocked that Long would order such a thing. She called out to Long and said that they needed to inform their superiors first. Loon looked at her and said confidently, without any doubt about her actions, that people's lives were at stake right now and there was no time for that. Long said that she would take full responsibility for the event. The protector asked to confirm Lun's order again, and then he asked if he should start the exile. Loon didn't hesitate to tell him to start the exile. The defender folded the seals from his hands and yellow circles appeared near him, after which he cast an ancient spell and sparks flew from his fingers. A bright pillar appeared on the roof of the tower, which went far into the sky. The sky started to shine due to the ritual. At this time, Tang Ka was approaching the scene of the accident. He held a black compass in his hand and said that another evil calamity had appeared on the construction site. Moreover, it was moving in the same direction. After which, Tang Ka went to get the red threads. Tang Ka closed the black compass and said it couldn't have been a coincidence. After that, we watch as Tang Ka flew to the tower, and from there a bright orange light was heard. After that, we see how the reverse report went and Tang Ka flew into the dark sphere. He was completely immersed in the dark sphere, and the timer kept going. The girl in the suit couldn't believe her eyes that he had decided to rush inside. The girl looked startled and asked Commander Long if she could ask the defenders to release Tang Ka. Long looked over and coolly said that the secret technique used by the protectors could only exercise demonic spirit. Long said it was a place to come back from. Long looked down and said that there was no record of people entering before him. Lun said she didn't know if it would lead to serious consequences. Long said that even if he could get out of there alive, she would make sure to personally stab him to death. After which, Long stretched out her hands in front of her and started shouting that that little bastard Tang Ka never listened to her. The blonde-haired girl looked at her and thought with tears in her eyes that Tang Ka might not have come back from there alive. After that, Loon stood and waved her hands in anger and used foul language. The blonde-haired girl looked ahead at the screen. Tang Ka climbed inside and I remember that when he was eating, a girl on a motorcycle drove up next to him after which she turned around and was shocked that the mummy was the same beautiful girl on a motorcycle who rode on a pedestrian street. Tang Ka folded the seals in his hands and activated his golden underworld eye. He saw that this person's soul had fused with a demonic spirit, which meant that she was a half-human half-demon. After which, Tang Ka rushed towards her. Tang Ka was smiling and knew that this was beyond his capability, but this was his chance, which only happened once, and he couldn't just turn away from it. Tang Ka really wanted to go to that world to have fun. After which, he flew towards the banishment spell. The people in the headquarters were shocked. The defenders were also shocked. They didn't understand what this child was doing. Tang Ka went there with bright eyes. The defenders looked up, where a bright light began to come out of the clouds and then the animal's face came out, which opened its mouth and radiated bright rays that drove the mummy out. Zio was inside it all and sat quietly, after which she began to levitate and gradually ascend to the top. After that, we see how the red lines of fate from the black compass were drawn to it. Tanka was surprised by the power of this demon, because they wouldn't just use exorcism. Moreover, Tanka didn't understand why the evil calamity had attached itself to this body. Tanka looked in Zio's direction and said that he had seen this figure before. After all, we are transported to the heavenly inverted world, where the sky also began to shine bright light. The demons that were sitting there eating meat were very surprised that the door was opened again. The demon who was eating meat looked down with a smile and said that the long-awaited day had finally arrived. 
after which he jumped up and went to the gate. He said that over the past few years, he had hunted at least three demonic spirits a day. All this rigorous training was to prepare for this day. He went to the place where the bright light was shining and said that when he got back from here, he would slaughter the entire city before taking revenge on the old farts. The demon was very happy to be free and kept repeating it. He stretched out his hand towards the light, but then his hand started to burn with flames, after which he was burned to ashes. The demon said that freedom was in his hands, but the destructive power of this sealed feast was truly a formidable barrier. His eye began to fall to the ground and then began to regenerate. The demon said that fortunately, he was able to regenerate and restore his original body as long as any of his organs existed, since he failed this time. He can just continue training to try again with his special ability, after which the demon said that he will definitely achieve his success in, in the future, and will not give up. The demon said that one day, he would become the only demonic spirit that managed to escape from the underworld. Then an eye flew into Tang Ka's face. Tang Ka crushed his eye, and then the demon from the underworld started calling him an abomination and shouting in anger. After which, he landed on the ground and said that this girl must be around here somewhere. He looked around, but saw nothing but emptiness. Tang Ka couldn't believe that she had run away. After which, Tang Ka said that she was a lot of trouble. After that, a large red demon that had tusks and eyes that glowed with a bright light landed behind Tang Ka. Tang Ka turned to look at the demon, and the demon told him that he originally wanted to see what kind of loser was sent here, but he didn't expect to send a human here at all. The demon started drooling and told Tang Ki that he hadn't eaten in a long time, after which he said that he smelled a very pleasant nostalgic smell of a human. Tang Ka looked in his direction and said what it all meant. Tang Ka looked towards the demon and said with a smile that he knew where the previous uninvited guest was. After that, we are transported to Zio whose horns were burning. She woke up in her body, and her horns were completely burned off. She got up and started yelling that she was late with the delivery. After which, she started looking around and didn't know where she was. She tried to remember what had happened. She remembered that she was doing a delivery service, and then she bumped into something and fainted. After that, she'd seen fireworks when she'd woken up last time, and now she was here. Zio was surprised, then she remembered the injuries from the accident and looked at her body. But there weren't any wounds on her body, but she felt some pain that was due to those very wounds. She began to move forward in a world where there was a very large number of dangerous demons and did not understand who sent her here. Zio said that she didn't remember such a place in the Lanchan area, after which she was attacked by a snake demon and was going to bite off her head. After that we watch as the demon who wanted to eat Tang Ka drove him like a friendly dog. After which, he was all beaten up and said that even if he went there, it would be useless, because the blue moon had appeared here ever since an ordinary person got here. The demon said that because of what he said earlier, even if she is treated as a human, the probability of her remaining alive is very small, because a horde of demonic spirits could reach her at any time. The demon looked and said that the most important thing was that their lives were on the line, and then a horde of demons followed them. Tanka sat on top of the demon and told him not to worry about it. Tang Ka looked and said with a smile that if there is a desire, then there is a way. After that, we get new cards in the case again. Lightning Rod, Raccoon Dog Lightning Rod possessed extraordinary speed and regenerative ability. It was able to recover to its original form as long as any of its organs remained intact, a demonic spirit that was extremely difficult to deal with. The Raccoon Dog wears a tortoiseshell shell, which has extremely strong protection. It is very strong and is able to burrow underground. After that, Zio was attacked by a demon. Her head sank into the demon's mouth, but she quickly dodged it using her aura. The demon missed and the blow landed on the ground, which it destroyed. Zio nimbly jumped away and looked in the demon's direction. Zio didn't understand how she was able to jump away so nimbly. All she could remember was that something was coming at her, and then she was already out of the way. The demon stood in front of Zio and watched her intently. Zio saw him and was extremely frightened by all of this. She didn't understand what kind of monster was in front of her. Zio found it very disgusting. The demon stood there and didn't understand what Zio was saying at all. After that, we watched Zio run in the other direction and couldn't believe that this monster had just tried to eat her. After which, the demon landed in front of her and Zio fell to her knees. Her eyes lost any hope as she was surrounded by the patterns on the demon's back. She looked at the patterns and saw the memories. She saw her mom and dad. She recalled the first time she cried when she was little and fell off her bike. Her parents came up to her and her mom asked if she was okay. Mom said it was all her father's fault for not holding her properly. Her father gave her a thumbs up and told her not to cry. He told her to get up because she had managed to get very far on her own without help. The mother looked at the father and shouted. She said that he did not love his daughter at all. My father looked and said that there are many ways to show love. 
Her father had said that one day Zio would have to take care of herself. Her father said that Zio was her most precious treasure, and there was no one in the whole world he loved more. After that, his mother asked him if she was second best to him. After which, she said that she was the one who liked Zio the most. Zio stood and rubbed her tears, after which her father said that they were both his precious treasures. My mother said that she didn't care, in any case, she liked Zio better. Zio recalled that after she saw them arguing over who loved her more, she couldn't help but start smiling, but after all that, her dad got sick and ended up in the hospital. Zio recalled how she and her mother came to visit her father, and this was the second time she cried. Since then, the mother has become a wet nurse at home. Zio recalled how during the day, she worked hard to earn money to pay for expensive medical services, and at night, she took care of her dad. Zio recalled how they would come with her mother and she would spoon-feed him. Zio recalled that after three years, dad was able to recover and his condition improved. Moreover, it could start working again. Zio was glad that at last her mother didn't have to work so hard on her own. Zio said that she didn't cry at that moment, unlike her mother, because she wanted to show them that she was already grown up and had already become strong enough to become their shield in the future. However, the good times didn't last long, as dad's illness came back again. After that, Zio talked about how this time her mother could no longer smile the way she used to. My mother became a very strict and gloomy woman. Zio recalled how the next time her mother smiled, it was after she met another man. Little Zio's mother told her to follow her. She said that if this continued, they would both die of exhaustion from taking care of her father. Zio held Papa's hand and cried. She said that her father needed them, and then she said that she wanted to stay with her father. Zio was telling her father to hurry up and stop her mother. Zio didn't want her mother to leave them. Zio said that she would definitely work hard to earn money and cure her father's illness. This was the third time Zio had cried. Soi recalled how after a year since her mother left, her father passed away. Zio said that this was the last time he cried in his life. Zio said that she hated her mother because she didn't even show up for her father's funeral. Luckily, dad has a lot of siblings, so at least she had a place to stay. After Zio visited several relatives over the course of a year, it turned out that the uncle and aunts who used to treat her very well actually didn't like her at all. After discussing with them, they finally decided that they would send Zio back to her mother. However, when they met, his mother said something that Zio would never forget in his entire life. After that, we get the card case again, a giant salamander. The giant salamander is able to live on land and in water, as well as move extremely quickly underwater. The salamander's back had patterns that looked like eyes that can create illusions, causing its victims to relive the most terrifying flashback moments of their lives, thus causing them to lose their ability to resist. Before she arrived, Zio heard from her relatives that the company her current husband worked for had gone bankrupt, which forced them to move to the suburbs to hide from the collectors. Zio noticed that his mother looked thinner and more tired than before. She must have suffered a lot, Zio guessed. When Zio saw her eyes like this, all the hatred in her heart disappeared as she missed her. Zio never wanted anything from her mother. Zio just wanted to hear her say that she was sorry for leaving her and her father. Zio wanted to see her mother hug her and cry. However, she just came over and told her to go home as she didn't have any money for her. Zio was horrified by this. After she said that, she no longer remembered what she looked like. Zio just blotted her face out of her life. Then the mother turned and left. Zio stared at the floor and didn't understand why. She was completely broken and injured, but at that moment, she couldn't cry. The only thing she felt in her heart was a stabbing pain, as if her heart had been pierced by needles from all sides. And the understanding that in the world of adults there is something more important than love or kinship, and that was money. After that day, Zio decided to work tirelessly to earn money, a huge pile of money. Zio said that one day she would make sure that the woman would regret leaving her and her father. Zio swore that from today on, she wouldn't shed a single tear. Zio recalled how she started working at the age of 15 and became quite strong. At first, she was washing dishes in a shop somewhere. Zio then described how for the sake of money, she ignored the contempt and rage of her relatives, with whom she was forced to live. Zio even learned to defend herself whenever a man made a pass at her while she was working as a waitress maid. Zio was often forced to work 10 hours a day and only had enough time to eat just one bun. Zio Zio every day, even though she was tired, she felt very happy after looking at her bank account. However, was this really what Zio had wanted all this time, and was it worth it? Zio wondered. Even if she made a lot of money, even if she made that woman regret leaving, what would she do next? Zio knew that she was still alone, just like when she was a child. She had no family, no friends, not even a dream. Zio continued to stare at the salamander's patents and didn't understand what it was even living for. Zio said that even if she disappeared from this world, 
there would be no one who would worry about her. It concerned her entire life and death. Zio looked at the salamander's patterns and cried once more. The salamander opened its mouth to eat Zio, but a blow immediately landed on the salamander's head. It was Tang Ka who came for Zio. Tang Ka landed on the ground and looked back at the tearful Zio. Zio looked up and saw Tang Ka, who was smiling and happy that she was still alive. Tang Ka looked at her and said that he came here to save Zio. Zio looked at him and started crying even more and shedding her own tears. Then she sat on the floor and sobbed loudly. Tang Ka wondered why she was crying again. At this time, the demon told them to take this chance to get out of here. After which, a bright light from exile lit up in the sky. Tang Ka looked at him and asked why he felt that the passage was starting to narrow. The demon wanted to leave quietly, but Tang Ka called out Piggy. Tang Ka asked how long the portal would remain open. He looked at Tang Ko with a startled expression and said that it was about half the time it would take to make a kettle. Tang Ko looked and smiled and said that he still had about two minutes to play. But at that time, the salamander began to slowly retreat so that Tang Ka wouldn't notice it. Tang Ka turned in the direction of the salamander and looked directly at its bewitching patterns. The demon looked at it all and was glad that Tang Ka had fallen for the flower patterns. The demon smiled and said that people who fell into the illusion will experience the most painful and terrible memories from their lives. The salamander opened its mouth to kill Tang Ku, while the demon said that after he lost the ability to fight, he would be eaten alive by the salamander. But all of a sudden, Tang Ka just hit the salamander with his hand. The salamander didn't understand what was going on, because she was sure that she had enchanted him with her flower patterns. Tang Ka asked her what the hell she was doing, after which he got angry and hit her so that she flew very far away. Tang Ka told her not to breathe directly in his face, because it was very disgusting. The demon looked at him with an outrageous look and suggested that he might not have a painful or terrible memory at all. After which, Tang Ka turned towards the portal and saw a large number of demons coming towards them, blocking their path. Tang Ka started flexing his fists, then he told Zio to stand behind him and not move. Tang Ka smiled and said that it was time for his entertainment. He took his hand and the bones of his hand lit up with a bright blue light. After which, he cracked his hand once more, and after that, his hand turned completely blue and was covered in lightning. Tang Ka looked up and said that he was forced to limit his actions in the real world because it was too destructive, but here the body suppression talisman borrowing light, he could do whatever he wanted. After which, he stood up and looked towards the monsters with a smile, and half of his body and face were covered in blue outline. His pupil changed and turned into a cross, and there were blue lines all over his body that gave off lightning. After that, we get another regular card in the case, borrowing a zipper. Borrowing lightning is one of Tang Ka's four talismans. After activating which, the lightning talisman will enter a state that allows him to release various types of lightning fast combat techniques. Tang Ka extended one hand forward, the other holding his own wrist. Tang Ka was smiling confidently. The left side of his face was covered and lit up with blue lightning. Everything around him sparkled, lightning surrounding his body. Three circles formed on the tips of his three fingers. Tang Ka fired them. After applying his power, he was thrown back. A bunch of monsters were running towards Tang Ko. The shot flew at the monsters with great speed. And so, three spheres appeared right in front of the first monster's face. Three spheres exploded and hit with electricity. The first monster fell down in convulsions. The rest of the monster crowd was also hit by the skill. They were all struck by the thunder tripod. The range of this skill was huge. All the monsters got hit. Tang Ko lightly shook his hand and said, Delicious. He turned around and started smiling with his eyes closed. Tang Ka turned to Zio Ran. He told her, let's go back. Zio Ran looked at him with her eyes full of tears. Tang Ka leaned in slightly and laughed. He told her that if you looked closely, she was a little cute. Tang Ka grabbed Zio Ran and lifted her up in his arms. Zio Ran asked him fearfully, what does he want from her? Tang Ka only told her to hold on to him. Tang Ka put one foot on the toe and kicked it. He activated borrowing the wind. The wind whirled around them, and with a jerk, they were already flying. Zio Ran started shouting because they were too high up. Out of fear, she began to hug him harder. Tang Ka whooped and told her that she was hugging too tightly. On the ground all this time was a monster with the face of a boar. One of its tusks was broken, and white fur was sticking out from the neck on its head. He had been watching them all this time. There were beads of sweat on his face. He was amazed that Tang Ka could activate the wind talisman technique with just a flick of his foot. In short, people who cultivated the mysteries of Taoism channeled their aura inside their body into talismans to serve as a medium for applying their techniques and skills. One who masters a single talisman technique can be considered outstanding. However, Tang Ka used the lightning talisman technique and wind talisman technique, two different elements. 
Moreover, he used talismans as a means of displaying these techniques. Therefore, Tang Ka is most likely a saint. Green Eye was watching. Several demons were standing on the mountain. A demon with long blonde hair and black ears stood in the front. A demon with pink hair and horns approached him. She asked if she should investigate Tang Kai's past. The demon told her no. His eyes glowed green, and he ordered everyone not to move a step away from Thelord. Meanwhile, the two demons were walking through the dungeon, their eyes glowing red. One of them looked like a ninja wearing a wide-brimmed hat, while the other looked like something that looked vaguely like a cat. It was dark all around, but in the distance something shone orange. On one of the broken mountains, there was an orange rock that contained a body. The body was headless and covered in strange circular patterns. A hole suddenly appeared in the cloud-strewn sky, and a black, orange-streaked monster's face peeked out. Meanwhile, Commander Han Lun Kiwi was angry and swinging her fists. The girl next to her had yellower hair pulled back in a bun. She turned to the commander in fright. Just as she started talking about Tang Ki, a portal suddenly formed. A hand first came out through the portal, and then so did Ka and Zio Ran. Zio Ran wrapped her legs around his waist, one hand around his neck, and the other held onto his hair. She hugged him so hard that Tang Ka's eyes popped open and he was gasping for breath. Suddenly, Zio Ran felt something, and her eyes started to turn black. The monster's mouth opens, and Tang Ka flies out with Zio Ran in his arms. They fly out of the mouth, and it immediately slams shut. Tang Ka landed on the roof of a skyscraper. Number 7 and Number 3 were already there. One was already about to grab a weapon and the other was forming a green sphere with hieroglyphs in his hands. Number three said you're a brat. It was so hard for us to banish her. Why did you bring her back? Tang Ka immediately turned to him and started shouting. I've done you guys a huge favor, and yet you dare to yell at me. Suddenly, Tang Ka heard a sound and looked at Sayo Ran, who was writhing in pain. Suddenly she opened her eyes and they were looking at each other. Zio Ran's appearance changed, the whites of her eyes turned black, and the color of her eyes changed to orange, as well as her pupil elongated. Horn-like growths formed above the eyes. Tang Ka slapped Zio Ran's face. Her horns broke. Number three was thinking that it had taken them so much effort to restrain this mummy, and yet a single slap from Tang Ka was enough to knock it out. Tang Ka lifted Zio Ran up with one hand and held her cheeks with the other. With a frown on his face, he started talking about Zio Ran being a human now, take a good look. Number three was covered in sweat. He didn't understand how it happened because she was just a mummy, and now she gives off a human smell. Suddenly, number seven called out to number three. He said that this was about people, and they had no right to interfere. Number three replied, we really wasted our time coming here. Number seven said, however, how did this brat know that she was a human? Number three started talking about how there is a certain skill that can observe the souls of living beings. This is a secret skill related to the unique secrets of Taoism. Being able to cultivate this vision skill at such a young age. His background isn't as simple as it seems. Number seven and number three teleported. As Yaka screamed and didn't know what to do, Zio Ran was drooling. A plane was flying towards Tang Ka, from which the commander's angry shout could be heard. Han Long Kiwi was very angry, she said to Tang Ki. I order you to return to the headquarters within three minutes, if not, you must remember the consequences. Tang Ka was sweating profusely and trying to smile, he replied that he understood, and tried to calm Commander Long down with words, he promised that he would explain everything to her later. Zio Ran was lying down, and various sensors and a mask were connected to her, and her body was secured with iron straps. Two men in white suits were circling her, monitoring her performance. Zio Ran was lying down, behind a large panoramic window. Four people were watching her. A man in a black suit with a device for an eye began to read out the information. The system has determined that all the souls have already returned to their bodies. We managed to weaken the mummy in time, and at the moment there are no accidents in this region, however. More than a hundred people died on the construction site. Tan Ka stiffened. Commander Long listened to the report and said to her subordinate, I understand, you can go. He answered, yes, and left. Commander Lan said, over a hundred people died, you accepted this request and so many people died. The commander was furious, pulling Tang Ku's cheeks. Tang Ka tearfully began to say that he had done everything he could. The commander calmed down slightly, she crossed her arms and said, however, if you didn't accept this request, the consequences would be unthinkable, but don't think that I will forgive you so easily. Tang Ka scratched his head and said, it was an a rank mission, although it could easily have been an S rank mission given all that had happened. I hurried there as soon as I accepted the request, but it seems the demon sensed my approach and ran away very quickly. He must have met this girl and merged with her for some reason. There's also something fishy. Why didn't those two protectors say that half of her soul is human? 
With their current strength, they shouldn't have had any problems. Tang Ka smiled. Luckily I have the golden eye of the underworld. Without it, this chick would have been exiled. Tang Ka said that I was indeed the champion demon hunter in this city, and he glowed with self-praise. The commander, on the other hand, was already ordering sleeves to hit him. But she was being held back by her assistant. Tang Ka then became more serious. Whether she was a human or a demon would depend on how they define these concepts. The man in the white suit took a syringe. He tried to draw blood from his hand, but the needle bent. He said that he had already switched to the largest needle, but still couldn't insert it. Another worker took out a drill and said, leave it to me. The first employee began to say that in addition to abnormal brain waves and other data that needed to be analyzed, all the others were within the normal range of an ordinary person. The next worker successfully extracted the blood and asked the captain to check it now. The captain gave a positive answer. They began to examine the blood. The captain said, strangely, the blood is like a normal person's. When suddenly something started to happen to the blood cells, the slide on which there was blood burst. The screen showing the blood went blank. Captain asked what was going on. The employee tells her that it seems the target's blood has mutated because it has been away from the body for too long. The captain ordered to show her what the employee sees. She was in shock. Just one drop of blood is so powerful. Captain Lan asked how the brainwave analysis was progressing. The employee told her that most of the indicators are normal, but there are several unknown electrical signals that belong to the mummy. The girl's body is no different from that of an ordinary person while she is conscious, but when brain waves take over her body, she turns into a demon. Tang Yaka said, so it wasn't an obsession, but a fusion at the cellular level, how does it even work? Suddenly, the commander called out to Tang Ka and gave a very strange smile. Tang Ka was nervous, little sister Lan, you can hit me or scold me. But don't talk to me like that and don't smile like that dot 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 it's quite scary. Commander Lan crossed her arms and smiled sweetly. She said, the power of one drop of this girl shocked me. But you managed to make her pass out with just one punch. You're just amazing. Tang Ka broke out in a sweat and replied, come on, don't do this. Sis Long. Sis Long continued to speak. Now she is a mix of human and demon. You know that the ghost company doesn't allow the presence of demons. Not to mention, it's like an S-class ticking bomb. The rules say that demons must be kept in the protector world, but half of it is human. Tang Ka was startled and recoiled from Commander Lan. Tang Ka asked, wait, you're not thinking about. Sis Lan smiled sweetly and said, you're so quick-witted. Before the higher-ups make a decision, I believe she'll be in good hands under your care. Tang Ka trembled all over and replied, this isn't funny anymore. I promised Master before I left the mountain that I wouldn't have any relationships with girls. Even together together is forbidden. Commander Lan started to get annoyed and said, Are you saying that I'll have to take responsibility for her? Don't forget that it's up to me to decide whether you can stay here or not. She walked over to him and rested her elbow on his shoulder, the other resting on his hip. She said that she would find a way to calm Master Tang Kai down. Tang Ka smiled nervously and agreed to be responsible for Xiao Ran. The commander turned to her assistant, Jing Zai, and told her to ask people to take the girl out without being seen. Jing Zai nodded and picked up the phone to contact the right people. The captain reminded Tang Ki to remember that he should not tell anyone that he was in another world, and that he should be with the girl 24-7. Tang Ka replied that he understood. Tang Ka walks away, thinking that he thinks he has a problem. Jing Zai looked at the commander, who replied that she knew what she wanted to say. The commander watched Tang Ka leave and said that the power he dismantled on missions was only 10% of his true strength. Jing Zai smiled nervously and said that she was more worried about the girl, because Tang Ka might accidentally kill her. The commander frowned. Tang Yaka walks down the dark street, he sighed. He seems to have some tough days ahead of him. Red threads radiate from Tang Kai, leading from it to the temple in the mountains. In the temple there is a large turtle on which a man was sitting. He shuddered from the fact that the red threads broke. Commander Lan is standing there making a phone call. The man picked up the phone, he says, Little Moon, why did you suddenly decide to call me? She got angry and shouted into the phone, If you're going to keep joking, I won't care what happens to your student. The man smiled and guessed what Lan wanted to tell him about how Tang Ka was in the third world and would be living with a girl possessed by a mummy. She became serious and asked how he knew about this. The man replied that if I couldn't tell him, I wouldn't let him leave the mountain. After all, I am. The 17th leader of the most powerful secret Taoist sect, Lai Yinjuan. Lun got angry and dropped the call. Lai Yinjuan smiled. He began to discuss Tang Ka's fate with the Mountain Master. The red threads of bad omens have broken, which means that there is an opportunity to make a prediction. Sitting on the Mountain Master Sun, they left the temple to admire the moon and take a walk. Looking up at the moon, Yinjuan said that Tang Ka had a chance. Xiao Ran lies in the dark, her body glowing with a white light. 
She opens her eyes and touches her head. She doesn't understand what's going on. Zio Ran saw her hand and was startled. Suddenly, she sensed a presence and turned her head to see a demon standing behind her. She was startled when she looked at him. She felt like she had seen it before. She remembered that it was a figure from the moment it crashed into something. The demon moved its finger and Zio Ran woke up. Zio yanked herself out of bed in a cold sweat. Zio couldn't tell if it was a dream. Zio looked around her and wondered where she was. Zio noticed that someone had changed her clothes. Zio felt a sense of freshness and comfort. Someone had taken off all of her underwear. Zio cringed and wondered if she had actually bumped into a ghost today and whose house she was in. Zio remembered how she had been involved in an accident and crashed into a monster that she had seen in her dream. And then she saw a firework display. After that, she was chased by a hideous monster, and later a young man appeared from the sky and defeated the monster and took Zio to heaven. It also reminded her of some terrible memory, and made her wonder if this young man really existed or if it was all because she was trying to stay too strong. Maybe she had been hoping for someone to protect her all along and had made up this man herself. Zio recalls that he was strong and had a warm smile, and she really wanted someone who could protect her. The same young man came into the room wearing only a towel on his hips, and asked if she was awake. Zio was embarrassed. She realized that this young man really existed and wondered logically if he had taken off her underwear. Zio didn't think he was that kind of person and threw a pillow at him. Tang Ka angrily asked Zio what she was doing and if she could see that he was brushing his teeth. Zio hit Tang Ka between the legs, but it didn't hurt. Tang Ka asked Zio what she was doing and why she was attacking if he saved her out of the kindness of his heart. Zio cried out that he was a pervert and asked who allowed him to take off her clothes. Tang Ka replied that Zio was completely soaked and therefore decided to take a bath at the same time. Zio yelled questioningly, did Tang Ka bathe her? Tang Ka replied that the master had told him that only married couples could bathe together. Tang Ka said that it was obviously not him who bathed Zio. Tang Ka told someone to come out and a monster appeared from the bathroom. Zio hid behind the bed. Tang Ka said that it was this monster that washed her. Zio asked why this monster was touching her body. The demon's eyes filled with tears and it began to roar. Tang Ka said that she might look big, but if you count her age by human standards, it's only a five-year-old girl. Tang Ka told Zio to hurry up and apologize. Zio surprised by these words apologized to the demon. Tang Ka said that the demon might look big, but it was considered the most tamed of its kind. Zio was surprised. Tang Ka explained that Tang Katty. And demons coexist in this world and that ordinary Tang Caddy like Zio don't know about it. Tang Ka said that among other things, one of the demons is inside Zio's body. Tang Ka, looking at Zio who didn't understand, said that it was all a hassle and asked the demon to explain everything. Zio Zio told the demon that it was a pity, to which the demon replied that it was fine. Demon asked Zio what she wanted to know. Zio first asked why she was in his house to which the demon replied that the ghost company had ordered Tang Ku to take Zio away. Zio asked what the ghost company was. Demon said that the ghost company has a very complicated relationship with demons, and that it's best to hear everything from the very beginning demon began to talk about how demons have lived in this world since ancient times, but most bad demons perceive people as food. But many years later, there were people who could resist the demons, and they founded organizations called sects. Each sect took on the responsibility of protecting the people and from that moment on, people had more and more ability. But this also meant that the human rulers became wary of the Taoist forces. For this reason, the Taoists were persecuted. After a while, the demons rushed in without warning and started a huge war together at this point. The Taoists lacked the strength to fight back and as a last resort. The founder of the secret Taoists sealed most of the demons inside the Jade Seal, and this artifact was called the Supreme Seal. After this incident, the rest of the demons signed a truce agreement agreeing to coexist harmoniously with humans. Later, the Ghost Corporation was created to control the demons living in the human world. The demon said that was all. Zio asked about the demon inside her. The demon replied that it is better to ask Tang Ka about this. Tang Ka looked at Zio and said that it was time for real work and told Zio to lie down on the bed. Zio asked what Tang Ka meant to which he replied that he didn't know how many times the demon had taken over Zio's consciousness, but that there was much more demonic aura in her body than last time and if it was left like this then her consciousness would be absorbed by the demon inside. Zio wondered if she was talking about the monster that had appeared in her dreams. Tang Ka started making a gesture with his hands. Zio asked Tang Ka if he was going to cast a spell on her to which Tang Ka replied that he didn't have the opportunity to use this technique at all and therefore was going to take the opportunity to practice a little. Tang Ka cast a spell. Zio and Tang Ka fell into a dead sleep on the bed. They were in Zio's mind. 
Zio felt weak and that she couldn't move at all. She also realized that she wasn't in a dream. Tang Ka told Zio that it was her subconscious. Zio was surprised that Tang Ka was here and asked him why he was here and if he knew what she was thinking. Tang Ka said that it was because his subconscious had entered Zio's subconscious, and Tang Ka knew everything she was thinking and feeling. Tang Ka said that the reason Zio can't move is because her subconscious mind is dissipating. Zio asked what would happen to her when her subconscious mind dissipated. Tang Ka replied that then Zio's subconscious mind would disappear forever, or in other words, death would occur. Tang Ka said that he would rid her subconscious mind of this guy before Zio disappeared. Tang Ka said that just the thought of fighting with his subconscious mind was thrilling. Tang Ka came close to the demon and said that the demon seemed to have completely regained its own subconscious and added that it was necessary to fight in this case. The mummy looked at Tang Ku and said that he might have been a simple awareness, but he could still tell that Tang Ka was making and hunting him. The mummy said that Tang Ka knew exactly where he was and didn't want to let him go. Tang Ka got angry and told him to stop the idle chatter and get into a fight as soon as possible. The mummy looked menacingly at Tang Ku and said loudly that Tang Ku probably sent Bo in here. The mummy held out her hand and told Tang Ka to tell where Bo in was now. The mummy said that if Tang Ka didn't tell him, he would eat him. Tang Ka was angered by this behavior and said that if the mummy continued to say such strange things, he would just hit him. After that, the mummy's punch went to Tang Ku. Tang Ka looked at this and the mummy's knee hit him on the head. The mummy placed its foot on the floor and then swung its arm to hit Tang Ku once more. The mummy slapped him once more in the face and Tang Ka didn't resist. Tang Ka started to fall backwards and threw his head up. His head was damaged and part of his face just collapsed. After that, the mummy became alert. After which, the mummy looked in Tang Kai's direction and realized that its instincts were telling it to run away from Tang Kai. He ran to the side and turned around to look at Tang Kai. The mummy couldn't believe that Tang Kai was so terribly strong. After which, the mummy watched as Tang Kai's face burned with a light flame and began to recover. Tang Ka gave the mummy a stern look. After that, Tang Kai's face completely recovered, and he said that the mummy shouldn't have hit him in the face, after which he started calling him names. The mummy in his head thought that he was just an abnormal person. The mummy looked at him and didn't understand why Tang Kai's very existence gave off a sense of menace. Tang Ka looked at him, and his eyes were yellow in color. Tang Ka said he should have expected S rank to have such strength. Tang Ka said that he managed to hurt him. Tang Ka said that the mummy's attacks are strong, but now it's his turn to attack. The mummy looked at him and also said, although Tang Ka is strong, but he forgot that this is also his subconscious mind. Tang Ka looked at the floor and saw a large shadow. Tang Ka turned around and saw a huge mummy standing over him. Then the mummy grabbed Tang Ku and started holding him. The mummy said it was his clone, which he created out of a desire for revenge. He said that his clone is invulnerable and will not be able to break out of its grip. The mummy said that his consciousness was strong, but he still couldn't hurt Tang Ki. After that, the mummy spread its arms and said that other than that, it could also create countless copies of itself. After that, the outlines of his legs began to appear in front of him, and after that, he completely merged with the mummies like him. The mummy stood in front of their versions and said that although their speed couldn't match his, they were also as strong as him. The mummy looked at Tang Ku, who looked at him, and then the mummy said that the blow of his version was enough to turn Tang Ku into dust. After that, his versions went to Tang Ki, and the mummy stood and looked at it. Then he said that Tang Ka came to the wrong place. The mummy looked at Tang Ku and said with complete confidence that he wouldn't win here. Tang Ka looked at it all with a startled expression. In Tang Ka's eyes, it could be seen that many clones were heading towards him. They almost reached him. After that, Tang Ka started glowing blue and said that he was surprised that he had a large number of clones. Tang Ka said that it was too old-fashioned and lame, and then looked at him with displeasure. Tang Ka began to break free from the mummy's hands that held him and emit a blue light. Tang Ka broke free of his grasp, he fell to the ground and smiled, after which his eyes and mouth emitted a bright light. After that, an explosion occurred in its place. The mummy was wary and assumed that this was his true form of consciousness. Tang Ka was all blue in color and radiated bits of it from his eyes, arms, and legs. Tang Ka stood over all the mummies and was incredibly large. He said that he pretended to be weak, hoping that he would use some perfect technique. Tang Ka said that he even let them hit him, and the mummy showed him just clones. Tang Ka looked to the side and said that it totally sucked. Tang Ka had been hoping for a good fight, but in the end, it didn't work out that way. The mummy looked at him and fearfully ordered all the columns to return to their positions. Tang Ka then watched as all the clones swiftly ran towards the creator, after which a shadow rose in their place, after which Tang Ka struck, incinerating everything in his path with fire that covered his body from head to toe. The mummy looked at it all with caution, and he couldn't believe that they were all destroyed. After that, 
The mummy jumped up and headed towards Tang Ki. Tang Ka lay down on the ground and struck a pose. Tang Ka ironically asked if such a pathetic clone was going to kill him. Tang Ka said that he couldn't call himself invincible when he was so weak. Tang Ka said that he would teach Tom a lesson, and then raised his hand to the clone and wanted to give him a flick. Then the mummy's head flew off his body. Tang Ka smiled and said that this is what it means to be invincible. After which, he watched as the mummy's body rapidly fell to the ground. Tang Ka stood on the ground and walked towards the mummy's body, then began to ponder. He realized that his consciousness was almost recovering, and then said that it was very strong. Tang Ka looked and said that the bow and that the mummy was talking about must be his enemy. Tang Ka didn't understand what he had to go through in his life for things to turn out like this. After that, Zio opened her eyes and looked at her body. She said her body was fine again. Tang Ka looked at her and told her to imagine some vessel that could seal the mummy inside. Zio looked at Tang Ku questioningly and said that she didn't understand what he was talking about. Tang Ka looked at her and said that it was her consciousness, so only she could create something inside it. Tang Ka then said that she should create a vessel to contain the mummy. Tang Ka said that anything could be used as a vessel, then added that he had very little time and was slowly starting to burn out. Zio ran her hands around in fright and said that she didn't know what to do. Zio said that she would create a bag and lock it inside, or seal it in a necklace or a ring. Tang Ka looked at her and started shouting that he didn't ask what to buy her, after which his body almost disappeared and he reminded her of it. Zio gave a confident look and said that she understood everything. After which, Tang Ka, who was almost burned out, looked back and was disappointed in what Zio had created. He saw a huge lipstick with a mummy sealed inside. The mummy was inside the lipstick and couldn't move. Zio looked and asked if it could stop him, and then she completely disappeared from here. The mummy stood behind lipstick and watched Zio disappear. The mummy's mask completely came off and left him with only one skull. After that, we are transported to another place where someone said that he was very cold. It was raining hard outside, and someone said it was freezing. He said that his body was very heavy, and he felt sharp pain. After that, he saw the blood, and did not understand whose it was. After that, he heard laughter and went to the blood, and saw a man with long hair in front of him. He asked who it was, after which the man with long hair turned around and apologized, then said that it was Sui Kiao. He had no eyes and was smiling horribly, and there were scars on his face where his eyes were. After that, we are transported to Zio who was looking directly at Tang Ka, who was next to her. Zio yelled loudly, then covered her embarrassed face with her hands and asked Tang Kai what he was going to do with her. Tang Ka looked at her and said that Zio was unconscious and muttering all the time. Tang Ka said that he wanted to get closer and check if there was any demonic energy left in her. Zio said that even if he was telling the truth, he should get off her. Tang Ka was over Zio who was lying on the bed. All this time, they were talking in this position. Tang Ka stood up and said that he had sealed the demon in her so that Zio wouldn't have to worry and she would be fine, after which she told Zio to take a good rest today. Zio looked at Tang and asked in surprise why he was still wearing it. Then she asked what had happened in the first place. Tang Ka said that if, in simple terms, the demon ran away and he chased after it, then he found her and somehow merged with Zio. Tang Ka said that he used her body to cause a disturbance, then he was taken to the headquarters of the ghost company. But since Zio is not exactly an ordinary person, but also not completely a demon, Zio was sent to Tang Ki. Tang Ka stood and looked at Zio saying that until they found a way to get rid of the demon Zio, he would live with him. After that, Zio started shouting and getting embarrassed. Zio started to get angry and said that Tang Ka was actually holding her captive. After that, Zio said that she couldn't stay in a stranger's house, especially when he was a boyfriend. Zio said that no one knew if Tang Ka was telling the truth, then recalled the bathing situation. Zio said that Tang Kai was going to kiss her. She said that Tang Kai's face was very close to hers, and then said that Tang Ka wanted to kiss her. Tang Ka stood up and didn't understand what was going on at all. Tang Ka asked Zio what she meant by a kiss. After which, Tang Ki was told that Zio was referring to a kiss on the lips. It was when a woman and a man joined their lips. It was a way to show their love for the other partner. Tang Ka turned to the person who had told him this and asked how she knew. She covered her eyes with her hands and said that I saw it while watching TV. Tang Ka said that she was still too young to look at such strange things. Zio stood and watched with a straight face. After that, she got angry and told Tang Ka not to play dumb. Tang Ka stood there and said that he had no idea what Zio was talking about. Tang Ka said that if you put your lips to someone's lips, you'll get their saliva in your mouth, and that's disgusting. The demon stood nearby, holding its jaw. Zio looked suspiciously at Tang Ka, who looked back at her. Zio knew that he wasn't waiting, so she assumed that he might have been the one who was called a complete idiot. Tang Ka went and said that he was tired of talking, 
after which he said that Zio could have slept right here. Tang Ka wanted to talk about what his master had once said, but he was interrupted by Zio and asked what he would do if she just left. Tang Ka said that a man should never lay a hand on a woman. After which, Tang Ka said that if she wanted to leave here, he wouldn't stop her. After which, Tang Ka looked in Zio's direction and said that if she left, she should know that the guy they chained up in her could appear at any time. Zio stood there and listened in shock to everything Tang Ka said. Tang Ka said that only he could guarantee Zio's safety. After which, Tang Ka went ahead and told her not to wander around. After which he said that there were many demons living here. Tang Ka said it wasn't his problem if she was afraid of them. Zio lay in bed at night and stared at the ceiling. Zio said that there was nothing she could do since she had nowhere to go and he saved her life. Zio lay down and said that Tang Ka didn't look like a serious person. But she knew for a fact that Tang Ka was a good person. Zio turned around on the bed and didn't understand why it was so much easier for her to sleep here than in her relative's house. After which, Zio fell asleep. Suddenly, something began to move under her blanket. It approached Zio, and a huge black stinger came out from under the blanket, which was looking in Zio's direction. After that, Zio woke up abruptly. It was already morning. Zio looked down and still she couldn't believe what happened yesterday was real. SAE really needed to stay with Tan Kui from now on. Zio also didn't know what to do with the thing that was sealed inside her body. After which, Saya turned to the side and was shocked. She started shouting loudly at the entire building. Tang Ka covered his ears and came to Zio together with the demon. They didn't understand what had happened and why Zio was shouting at such an early time. Tang Ka and the demon were shocked by what they saw. They saw Zio leaning against the window and looking out at the beautiful view. Zio said she didn't notice it last night. Zio stood there and admired the view and the place. This place was called the King of Buildings of the Northern City District. Saya held her face and started saying that she was dreaming. After that, I fell into a stupor and like an inanimate rock that it is located next to Bing Avenues in Lushan City. Its area is more than 30,000 square meters, and the total area of the building is more than 150,000 square meters. It consists of four ultra-luxury residential buildings in Binjong, and the tallest building in the country. The topmost floor is 121, and it reaches a height of over 600 meters. With a unit cost of 250,000 per square meter, it created a record in the country, and it is also known as the number one. And the cheapest apartments on higher floors are sold at six-figure prices. Tang Ka stood there and stared at the entire situation with a stony face. Zio asked if Tang Ka was an agent. Tang Ka looked at her and said that so many things had happened to them yesterday, and that was the only thing that shocked her. Zio turned around and Tang Ka said that he already thought that she was making a noise so early in the morning because of something behind her back. The demon was standing next to her and said there was something behind her. Zio turned to face them, her tail sticking out from under her tank top. Zio noticed this and was shocked. Tang Ka looked at the demon and said it looked cool. Zio stared at her stinger and didn't understand what it was. She wondered why she had this thing right above her ass. Tang Ka hesitated, and then the stinger raced towards Tang Ki. He nimbly dodged and the sting passed by him and the demon. After that, it turned around and headed towards Tang Ka again. Tang Ka dodged deftly, and then he leapt into the air and continued to dodge him there. He landed on the ground and ran towards Zio. The demon reached out and called out to Tang Ka. But he still continued to run towards Zio's sting followed them. He approached her and then bent down, and the stinger almost pierced Zio's head. The stinger stopped right in front of her eyes. Tang Ka looked at all of this and said it was interesting. After that, we see how the stinger easily cut the soda can. The jar fell to the floor and Zio realized that she could control it. Tang Ka looked at it all and his eyes lit up. He said it was just amazing and now he wants it for himself too. Zio looked at him and started shouting because she didn't understand why Tang Ka was so happy. Zio asked why she had this tail. After that, she asked if he didn't seal that monster. Tang Ka looked at the whole situation and told the demon who was standing next to him to attack her, as Tang Ka really wanted to test how much power was in her thing. The demon told Tang Ki that it would probably be dangerous, but Tang Ka smiled and told the demon to go all out. After that, the demon agreed, and his eyes changed color and his hair began to move in different directions. Zio suspected something was amiss, so the demon apologized to Zio and its hair rushed towards Zio to attack her. They were rapidly approaching Zio, after which she hesitated and her tail began to deftly repel all the attacks of that demon. She fought off absolutely all the attacks, and she stood still. The demon was shocked that her tail simply deflected all of her attacks. Tan Ka said that was enough, and the tail was even stronger than Tan Ka had expected, so he turned around and started walking. Tang Ka approached Zio and said that the power of Zio's tail could be compared to B-ranked demon. Tang Ka said that Zio has him under control, 
but he can protect her in battle if she is in danger at will. Tang Ka smiled and said that perhaps Zio's tail started attacking him because she was startled by the surprise. Tail thought that Zio was in danger and attacked the strongest one nearby. After which, Tang Ka abruptly slapped in front of Zio, and the tail began to move. Tang Ka told her to just watch, after which he caught her tail, which was heading towards Tang Kai's head. Zio stood there and listened carefully to what Tang Ka was saying. He said it was unbelievable. Even after sealing the demon's consciousness, Zio Zio could still use its ability. Zio got angry and said that he was very ugly, and others would take her for a monster in this form. Tang Ka approached Zio and asked her if she seriously thought her tail was ugly. Zio said yes. Tang Ka pondered and said that he didn't understand her at all, because in his eyes, the tail was simply amazing. After that, Tang Ka said that last time, she had a horn that she could hide. Tang Ka looked at Zio and asked her to concentrate on trying to reduce her tail. Zio looked at him and asked if it would work. Then she said that trying was better than doing nothing. After that, Zio closed her eyes and silently told her tail to get smaller. Zio noticed something and opened her eyes and looked at her tail, which had shrunk quite a bit. She said that everything worked out, and Tang Ka congratulated her after saying that he needed to get to work, so Zio should be smart and stay here. Tang Ka turned around and started to leave, then said that he had never seen such cases before, when a human and a demon merged together. Tang Ka said that they could just watch what was going to happen to Zio right now. Zio told Tang Ka not to leave. Tang Ka turned around and said that he should get to work. He said that he had no idea how to extract the demon from Zio. Zio smiled and said that she also wanted to work for the ghost company. Tang Ka looked at all this with a straight face and said that Zio just wants to die. Zio started to scream and get angry. She told Tang Ka not to underestimate her. After which, a notification came to Tang Kai's phone. He smiled and took out his phone, then said that he needed to stop talking as he needed to work. Tang Ka looked at his phone and his face changed. He was holding his phone, which contained a message from Lun, who wrote that the company had decided to temporarily stop all of his missions. Lun wrote to tell him to keep an eye on the girl and wait to hear from her. Tang Ka stood there and was disappointed. The demon asked Tang Kai if he was all right. Tang Ka looked ahead in disappointment and said that he was now unemployed, after which he showed a message from Long. Zio came up to him and said that she might be able to help him. Tang Ka turned to Zio with complete disappointment and told her to stop everything, then added that she only made the whole situation worse. Tang Ka said that it was because of Zio that he lost his job. Zio stood in front of him and told him that his mission at the moment was to keep an eye on her so that nothing would happen, so they suspended her from other matters. Zio said that he couldn't take missions from the company, but they could still do personal tasks. Tang Ka looked at her and smiled because Zio was right. Tang Ka then asked Zio what we meant. Zio looked at him and said that she would be responsible for finding jobs, but they would fight the demons together. They will also share in the profits, Tang Ki 70% and Zio 30. Zio invited Tang Ki to become an employee. Zio extended her hand in front of Tang Kui and introduced herself to Tang Kui. He shook her hand and also introduced himself, then said that I looked forward to her not creating unnecessary problems. Zio was surprised by this. Tang Ka turned around and headed in the other direction. He said that for many people, catching demons means putting their lives on the line. After which, Tang Ka stood up and told Zio not to think that by being capable, she would be competent enough for the ghost company. Zio looked at Tang Ka in surprise and listened to what he was saying. He said that the world was a thousand times more terrifying than Zio Zio could have imagined, but to Tang Kai, it was just a game. Tang Ka turned around, smiling and said that he wasn't the best demon catcher in losing for nothing. Zio stood there and was shocked that Tang Ka had started all this dialogue just to show off in front of her. Tang Ka turned to her and said that for the likes of Zio and Tang Ka, staying put while waiting for orders was boring to death. After which, Tang Ka said that if she had enough skills to handle this job, then so be it, he would cooperate with her. Zio looked in his direction and said with a smile, it's done. After that, we are transported to the empty place where the fog was. Who? He said that this is a restricted area and on the outskirts of the city and we should not climb here. The children were walking through the forest and one of the children asked the other if he was a coward. The other one said that he brought him here because we were friends and if he was scared, he could go home. After all these words, the terrified child agreed to stay with them. They reached a building and then the kids said it was their secret base. They came to a large door. The boy in the red cap was startled. Another boy in an orange t-shirt said he was going to explain the rules. He said that when he closed his eyes, they would hide, then the boy in red would have to count to a hundred and then find them. If he can't find them, then he won't be a member of their group. The boy understood all the rules and counted to one hundred. 
He opened his eyes and stood in front of the door, then started walking in. He ran inside while the boys watched him from under the tree. They came out and said he was a complete jerk. Another boy said that if he found out that we had abandoned him, he would probably wet his pants. The boy with glasses asked them if they were sure it was right to leave him there alone. The boy in the orange t-shirt told him not to fuss. There's only one road to the city from here, so he can sort it out for himself. The boy looked at the other man with concern and said that his father was a member of a consortium of four large firms and that if something went wrong, they might have problems. The boy in the orange t-shirt said that glasses had talked a lot today, and the other boy said that it was just a little prank and nothing bad would happen. The boy in the orange t-shirt said they did it all because the company his father was and fired his father, and then he asked to be a friend. The boy said it wasn't going to happen, and then he said he was going to pee in fear, and the other boy laughed and said that even if it did, he would never admit that it had happened to him. The boy in red walked through the building, where the floor creaked from his footsteps. He walked forward and lit the road with the flashlight that was in his phone. The boy began to think. He checked the entire length and breadth of the first floor. The boy hoped they were all hiding on the second floor. The boy thought that this house was very scary. He did not understand how these boys used it as a secret base. The boy looked down fearfully and prayed that no one would frighten him. He realized that if he wet himself in fear, they would definitely tell the whole class about it. Then the boy became alert and looked up. He realized that he had found one of them. In the distance, a dark silhouette could be seen looking in the boy's direction. The boy noticed that this silhouette didn't look familiar to him. The boy looked at her and was shocked that it was a little girl, after the boy said why she was standing right there. He looked at the silhouette of a girl, followed by a girl who dashed towards the boy. She had green eyes and looked like a shadow. She flew up to the boy and he looked at her in fright. She hung over him and told him to get out of here right away. The boy started screaming in fear, and immediately started running down the corridor, running further away from the girl. He looked back and was shocked that the girl was missing. The boy started crying out of fear, and the girl told him to play with her. After which, she jumped right in front of him, after which she once again told him to play with her. Next, we are transported to another place and see how the man bent his fingers and shot out a purple flame from them. He fired them at another person. It was a video game that Tang Ka was playing, and he sat and played it, and then he said that it was stuck in front of the monitor all day. Tang Ka asked if she still hadn't finished. Zio was sitting at her computer, doing something. She typed something on the keyboard and said that everything was ready. Then the doorbell rang. Zio Zio looked back at Tang Ko and said to herself that Tang Ka didn't even pay attention to the doorbell. Zio thought that Tang Ka was acting as if she really lived here and not him. Zio went and opened the door. She looked out and saw a girl with a top that had a picture of Pokemon on it and hairpins in the form of eyeballs. Zio looked at her and was about to say something, but the girl interrupted her and said that she had brought Zio Oz things and the bike was currently in the auto repair shop. Zio was surprised by this. She looked at her and said that it was her that five-year-old. The girl put her hand to her chest and said that this was indeed the case, and then she apologized to Zio for not introducing herself at the time. She pointed at herself and said that her name was Demon Yatun, but Zio could call her Yea. Zio looked at the whole situation with shock and thought about the fact that it can't all be like this and it's all not true. That same big demon turned into a little girl. Yea said that she was very happy because now she could spend a lot more time with Zio. Zio thought to herself that it was all a dream and she couldn't be a child. After that, she opened her eyes slightly and looked at her big breasts and again said that she couldn't be a five-year-old child. Zio was told that the girl was wearing human skin, but then she said that it sounded creepy. Zio lay down on the sofa with Yea while Tanka played a game. Yea said it wasn't as bad as it looked, but she said she couldn't wear real human skin. Yea said that she had a small black ball called a spirit bag. When Yea presses it, it envelops her body and she looks like a human. Yea said that Tan Ka chose this bag with this image for her. Zio was shocked that Tan Ka chose this image for her after which she looked at him warily and threw shoes at him, after which she said that Tan Ka is incorrigible. Zio yelled at him because she didn't understand how he could give a five-year-old girl such an outfit, and then said that Tan Ka was crazy. Tan Ka turned to her and said that Zio was too rude. Tan Ka said that, by the way, she's in her house right now, but she keeps hitting him and yelling at him. Zio pointed her finger at Ye and said that Tang Ka didn't dare to say anything at all as he was a pervert. Zio reminded him that Ye was only five years old and he had chosen this image for her, and Zio asked Tang Ka if he thought it was indecent. Tang Ka stood up and asked what the problem was. Ye said that Tang Ka had told her that people liked big breasts. Tang Ka said that Ye wanted people to like her, and besides, this spirit bag was hard to come by, although he had no idea what was attractive about these two pieces of hanging leather. 
Xia looked at Tang Ka and thought he was a jerk. Tang Ka looked at Xia, and she wondered if Tang Ka was really that stupid, or if he was just pretending to be that stupid. Xia looked ahead and told Yea that people weren't as kind as she thought they were. Xia looked at her and told Yea to remember that the boys would like her, but she couldn't let them touch her. Yea looked at Xia and said that she understood everything she was saying. Yea said that if she was a human, then her appearance would be her disadvantage. After which she put her head down and said that she was a demon and she didn't care what people would do to her. Yea said that the main thing was that people liked her. Xia looked at Yea who was saying all this. Yea said that she was just a liar. Because if people knew the whole truth about what she really looked like, they would think she was a disgusting monster. After that, Zio took her cheeks and told her that Yea was a nice little girl. Zio smiled and said that demons like her deserve to be treated with kindness and respect. After that, Yea started crying at these words in her direction. Zio walked away and asked if she had gone too far. Then she told Yea that she hadn't scolded her at all and then apologized to her. Yea sat and wiped away her tears. Then she looked at her and said that Zio is just like Tan Ka. Yea said that they are both very kind people because they tell her the same thing. Zio was surprised, and Tang Ka listened to everything they said. After that, we are transported to someone's huge house. Who? When the caretaker notified them, they found three children who were together with the young master. After that, we see two dark silhouettes, one of which was standing and looking out the window. He told the other to continue. He said that they had searched the old mansion they were talking about, but the young master wasn't there. He said the geolocation on his phone said he was still in the house. He said they used thermal imagers and didn't even find the little mouse. After that, the man said that it looks like the young master continues to move around the house. The man who was looking out of the window suggested that they might be demons, and then he told them to contact the company. The man was surprised by this, after which he was told to assign a large amount as a reward and request the best demon catcher. The man turned around and cried. He told them to give him back his little boy. Zio approached Tang Ka and said that she was bored and opened a discussion about the paranormal on the internet. Zio said that a lot of people write about their experience of encountering mystical incidents, and how much it disturbs them. Some of the stories will be worse than many books. Zio looked at Tang Ka and said that these are the people who need their help. Tang Ka looked at her carefully and listened to everything she said. Tang Ka looked at her and asked if she had found a job for them. Zio said that she wrote out the cases that seemed most plausible. Zio said that it was getting late now, so she would check them out tomorrow as soon as she woke up. Tang Ka looked at her and said with displeasure that he would go crazy at this rate if he stayed at home idle any longer. Tang Ka said that he only agreed to her offer because she promised to find them all jobs. Zio looked at him and Tang Ka said that he was not very patient, and if there was no work from Zio tomorrow, then there was no need for him to sit around with her. Tang Ka said that he didn't understand why Zio wanted to catch demons with him. Tang Ka said that she insisted on joining the ghost company. Zio looked at him and said that in his current situation, she couldn't work, and she also said that Tang Ka couldn't stay at home and look after her forever. Zio looked at him and said that she would have the opportunity to earn money while Tang Ka was catching demons. Zio said that their cooperation would be fruitful for both of them. Zio understood that the most important thing was that it was a company paying good money judged by the size of the building. Zio understood that Tang Ka was quite strong and if he worked with him, then her fortune was assured. Zio looked in Tang Kai's direction. When Tanka said that catching demons was not safe, Tang Ka asked Zio if she was willing to risk everything for a couple of bills. Zio looked in his direction and said that it was true. Zio looked at Tang Ka confidently and said that it didn't matter what happened, she needed the money. Tang Ka looked at her and said that his master was right. Tang Ka looked at Zio with a straight face and said that master said that all the girls in the city are willing to go to any lengths for money. Zio looked at Tang Ka and started to grumble. She said that it didn't matter if there was work tomorrow, he wouldn't go anywhere, and Zio said that neither Tang Ki nor she could back down. Tang Ka turned away and said that he would go to bed and expect good news from her tomorrow. Zio looked at him and in her head assumed that everything should go well. After that, we see the cat walking on the balcony railing. Zio went to bed and said that she needed to find a client tomorrow. Zio looked at it and said that maybe this was the chance that the gods had given her, and it had to be taken. Zio looked at the picture that was on the nightstand and saw her family there. Zio thought about how she would definitely meet her mother soon. Zio put on her stockings and told Papa to pray for her in heaven so that she would find a client today. She reached out to open the door. After she opened it, there was Tang Ka who was smiling and waiting for her. Tang Ka looked at him and said that Zio had surprised him a lot since it was still early in the morning, and they already had customers. Zio looked at all this with surprise and Tang Ka said that they were already waiting for them downstairs. They went downstairs and went to the two bespectacled men. Tang Ka walked and smiled. 
He said it looked like they were going to have fun. After which, Zio sensed something amiss from the two men. The men opened the door and said their boss wanted to meet them at his residence. They pointed to the car and told them to get in. Zio looked at all this with fear and thought that they would be taken to their deaths. After which, the car went to the residence of their boss. Zio and Tang Ka were sitting inside the car, and there were two men sitting opposite them. They stared at each other, after which Tang Ka asked Wu Zio if she felt that they were demons, then looked at her with a smile. Zio looked at Tanka and said that she knew it. Zio said that there were two ghostly figures behind them, but she thought it was a trick of her eyes. Tang Ka looked at her and said that his vision technique allows you to identify demons based on the color of their energy spirits. Tang Ka noticed that Zio was talking about being able to see their true selves. Tang Ka looked ahead and said that this demon in her body would really help her get into the ghost company. Then they drove up and got out of the car. They stood right in front of the huge door. Tang Ka said that the door was huge, then suggested that dinosaurs live there. Tang Ka looked ahead and said that he had scanned the place with his technique while they were driving in the car. Tang Ka said that the spiritual energy of all the inhabitants here is at least a rank. Tang Ka said it was too much if they were sent to bring them. Tang Ka looked at them and asked with a smile when they were planning to attack them. Tang Ka looked at them and saw the men starting to change clothes on the street. Tang Ka was shocked by this and then asked what they were doing. The men had completely undressed and removed their glasses, their eyes glowing green. They apologized and said they didn't want to damage their clothes because they were quite expensive. They stood in front of them in their underwear, and there were scars on their bodies. They said that there should be no misunderstandings and they would explain everything to them. The man said that they entered a private area, now they are attacking them. After which another man said that they chose this place only because they did not break the law. Zio stood there and didn't understand what was going on. She looked at Tank and asked what was going on here and what they were talking about. Tang Ka looked at them and said that except in extreme cases, legally registered demons should not attack a person, as it was a serious crime. Tang Ka smiled and said that they had found a loophole in the rules to fight them. The men looked at Tang and Zio and said that it was the boss idea, and if they could get them to admit defeat within five minutes, then they would let them see the boss. The demons looked at the girl and said that it was best for her to move away for their own safety. After which, their hands became sharp, and they themselves were covered in a green aura. Zio ran to the side, and the demons completely transformed into huge, terrifying beasts with long manes and fearsome eyes. Tang Kai watched all of this with a smile, after which the two demons headed towards Tang Kai. He deftly dodged the demon's attack that was destroying the ground nearby. Tang Ka looked at it and said that it was quite fast. The demon raced back to Tang Ki and leapt into the air towards him. Tang Ka was caught between the two demons in mid-flight. Tang Ka turned around and saw another demon on the other side. Zio watched from the sidelines and saw that they were about to attack him from both sides. She shouted at Tang Ki to be careful, but Tang Ka continued to do nothing as the monsters kept closing in. Tang Ka smiled and said that he thought only his legs would be enough to defeat them, after which Tang Ka said that he had underestimated them and took out one hand from his pocket. After which, Zio watched as a flash appeared in the air, and all the rocks from the shockwave flew to the side. The shockwave from their blows was so strong that Zio couldn't stand still and her feet went sideways. She looked at what was in the air after Tang Ka deftly beat those demons. Zio looked at all this and was shocked. She didn't understand what she needed to do or what was happening in the air in general. She was looking at the red light that was coming from them in the sky. Zio couldn't see anything clearly. Tang Ka deftly fought two demons at once. Tang Ka said that he didn't want to fight anymore. Then he took one by the mane and the other and pushed their heads together. Tang Ka said that they should cool down a bit. The demons were shocked from this. Zio looked at all this and was shocked when a battered demon fell down next to her. Two demons fell down next to her. Zio turned to the side. She heard some kind of explosion, and then something fell from behind her. She turned around and saw a huge pillar of smoke and light. It was Tang Ka who was on top of the demon. Tang Ka sat on top of the demon and asked if they would admit defeat. The demon clenched his hand into a fist and said that they Quicksilver Wolves would never admit defeat as long as there was a chance of victory, whereupon the demon started shouting and said that they would continue the battle. Tang Ka said that he was braver and would have to beat him seriously. After which, the demons became alert as Tang Ka started swinging to strike at the serious one. Tang Ka noticed that at that moment, the Quicksilver Wolves felt goosebumps on their skin, a normal strike filled them with fear. It looked powerful enough to destroy an entire city and turn it into ruins. After that, Quicksilver Wolf immediately shouted that he was admitting defeat. Quicksilver Wolf immediately turned into a cute kitten that was under Tang Kui. Zio Zio was shocked because it hadn't even been five seconds since the battle started, and now this bloodthirsty monster was obediently wagging its tail in front of Tang Kui. 
Zio didn't understand what she was missing in this battle at all. Zio looked at the other wolf, and it also obediently wagged its tail while it was half buried in the ground. He said that if his friend gave up, then he would admit defeat. The wolves said they had heard about his incredible strength, and they said they were willing to risk their lives to make the battle last for more than five minutes. They said that if they succeeded in this task, their race would be honored and respected. However, they were naive fools and didn't last longer than five seconds. They knelt down naked and asked for forgiveness, as they were reckless. Zio was shocked and turned away, then she asked to put on her underpants as well. Then the doors opened and they went inside. Tang Ka said that he got bored after a few blows and even then he calculated their strength. Zio was shocked from that. Tang Ka said that it wasn't interesting to fight after that. Tang Ka walked over and asked how many strokes she had noticed back then. She looked at him and said that she noticed one punch. Tang Ka said that he hit him twice. The demon asked the other if he felt something strange, and he said that he had hit him, but it didn't seem to hit him. The demon said that there was an invisible wall between him that protected him. The demon looked at the other one and said that he thought he had imagined it. He said that his clothes were also in perfect order. The demon lowered its head and said that if the rumors were true, then this kid was a mysterious monster. Tang Ka walked with Zio and listened to everything she said. Zio asked how Tang Ka had achieved such strength when he was still so young. She asked Tang Kai if it was his master who taught him such techniques. After that, the grass began to move, and some strange creature of black color with one eye climbed on the rock. After that, Zio walked together with Tang Kiwi. Zio told Tang Ki that she had something to confess. Tang Ka told her to talk, whereupon Zio smiled and said that she hadn't found this customer at all. Tang Kai got angry. He looked at Zio and asked where this employer came from back then. Zio looked at him and said that she didn't know where she was coming from. After which Zio noticed that Tang Ka had already promised her that if they had a job today, they would cooperate with him. After which, Zio said that they had nowhere to let go. After that, our heroes got to the employer and were told that the guests had arrived. They entered the office and saw a man who was standing with his back to them, and another who was watching our heroes. Tang Ka looked ahead and a masked man with a black katana asked if Tang Ka had defeated those demons. The masked man said that his sword said that he wanted to taste his blood after which he asked Tang Kai if he could hear his sword. Tang Ka and Zio looked at him with a straight face and thought that this was very stupid. Tang Ka looked at the man in surprise and asked him if his sword really could talk, after which Tang Ka asked his sword to say something again and started listening. Zio looked at Tang Ka as if he was a fool and thought in her head that he was a complete jerk because it was already clear that the man just wanted to fight with him. The masked man said that the two scars on the Quicksilver Wolves were his work, and added that he had defeated them in just two seconds. After which, he recalled standing over two defeated demons. After that, a fly began to fly over this man and he took up his katana. Moments later, he launched numerous attacks in the air and chopped this fly into all parts of its body. The masked man looked at Tang Ku and said that he was curious to see what would be faster than his sword or Tang Kai's fist. After that, Tang Ku was hit with a katana, and Tang Ka stood and looked on with a straight face. The man headed towards Tang Kei and started throwing a lot of punches. He shouted flying fish dawn. But after that, Tang Ka disappeared and flew out of the window, which he smashed with his body and fell into the street tumbling on the ground and collecting dust. The man had stopped and was lying on the ground. He didn't understand what had happened because Tang Ka didn't even move when he rushed towards him. The man said that Tang Ka looked unarmed, and then there was a blow. Tang Ka started walking slowly towards the man on the floor. The man was surprised and looked in his direction. He saw Tang Ku was holding his fist, and beside him was Zio with a straight face. Tang Ka said that he hated rude people like him, and then said that he attacked Tang Ku for no reason. The employer started clapping his hands and said Tang Ka is really the number one ghost company. He walked over to the broken glass and continued to clap. He said that Tang Ka was able to defeat his strongest bodyguard in an instant, after which he said that Tang Ka would get the job. Zio stood there in horror and listened to everything her employer said. He said that his son was missing in the old mansion. He said that the ghost company sent people to investigate last night, but they did not find anything. But the man said that he was completely sure that his child was still there. He stood in front of Tang Kiwi and Zio and said that if this was a demon's trick and even the ghost company couldn't handle it, then he must be incredibly strong. The man started sobbing and snotting, then started asking Tang Ka to help him find his son. He squeezed his hands and said that money was not a problem. Tang Ka looked at him with a smile and was glad that the demon was probably incredibly strong, and Zio stood and sparkled with happiness as money for that man was just not a problem. They were both satisfied with the task and found the reward to their liking.
After which Tanka stood in front of him and said that he accepted his offer. Zio stood next to him and said that they would definitely find his son. The man became alert and looked in the direction of the people. Zio turned around and saw a dark silhouette. She looked up and was in shock. After that, we see a boy who got lost in the building and came to his father's property by himself. Above him was a demon that completely enveloped him. The boy's eyes were completely blank and lost any hope. The boy was lying on the bed and the father asked what was happening to his precious son, after which she said that his son had become a vegetable. The father was near his son and crying. Tang Ka looked at the boy and said that he looked scared. After that, he became interested in what the boy saw that made him like this. The father asked his son to wake up. Zio looked at him and saw above him his true self. Above him was a green demon that was chasing after him and it was as if his soul was in great pain. Tang Ka smiled and was surprised. He said that the mummy's eyes were as good as his own. Zio looked at him with a straight face. After that, the father approached our people and asked if his boy was possessed, after which she said that they should save his boy. Tang Ka looked at him and said that the boy had lost his soul, after which she said that if they didn't find the boy's soul before midnight, then he would die. The father fell to his knees and grabbed Tang Ku's leg and said that his mother had died very early and that there was no one else besides this boy. The father said that he would give them anything, but they should help his son, and then began to cry loudly. Zio and Tang Kiwi looked on in surprise at the whole situation. Zio looked ahead and then went to the boy and said that he had something in his right ear. Zio said that there was some red thing there. Her father and Tang Kiwi looked at her, and then Tang Ka came over and told Zio to move away. He walked over to the child and immediately folded the spirit dispelling seals a moment later. After that, the boy's ear began to come out. After that, a shot was fired and Tang Ka became alert. He put out his hand and parried the shot which went to the floor and destroyed part of the floor. Tang Ka turned around and said that he had hit him, but he was still able to escape. It was a small black entity with one eye that was running away to the side. Tang Ka turned around and was shocked from that. He went after this entity and jumped out of the window. Tang Ka landed on the ground and said that this black entity was quite fast and he was starting to like it. After which, the man's bodyguard stood up and watched as Tang Ka ran back and forth and tried to catch the black entity. He picked up his sword and took a stance, saying that this was his second chance to show off his ability, after which a light circle began to appear around him. Tang Ka hesitated and went to the side after the essence, leaving the yellow field. He quickly ran towards him, after which the man's punch rang out. He cut this entity into exactly two pieces. He looked at Tang Ku and laughed at the fact that his sword was faster than Tang Ka. Tang Ka looked at him and became angry. Father and Zio started running towards them. Zio asked if they had captured it then asked them what it was all about. The bodyguard said that he lost last time because he was too reckless, so he offered to fight Tang Kui again. Tang Ka said that this green spiritual energy looked very familiar. After which, the bodyguard asked Tang Kai if his move was cool, which he hit that entity with. After which, he said that no matter how small and agile the enemy was, if it came within its kill radius, it would immediately die. Tang Ka then picked it up and asked why that bodyguard turned it into a black bean. Tang Ka looked at it and realized that it was a bean retreat technique. Tang Ka guessed that this was a technique used by one of the branches of the secret Taoist. But there was a problem, they were already exterminated long ago. After that, we are transported to the building where the person was sitting on a chair and reading. He said one of the beans was damaged. He said that if they were able to make his bean acolyte show himself, then it must be one of them from the Maotian sect. The man was reading a book and said that they would meet them soon. He was dressed in a nice suit and had blonde hair. After that, we are transferred to the bodyguard. He would touch his mask and say that his face was very cool, and only really strong people could show such a face. He said he was a freelancer. He said that he probably understands how dangerous it is for people like him to reveal their identity. He then said that his sword told him that he was worthy of it, after which he took off his mask and a head with long red hair and red confident eyes came out. He said that he was an independent saber warrior Zian Tang Ka. And Sayo went ahead and father said that they must find the soul of his beloved son. Hugh looked at Tang Ka and said that he should at least turn around and look at him before leaving. Zio looked at Tang Ka and said that that narcissistic guy said that he was on his own. Zio asked if he was a Taoist. Tang Ka looked and said that people like him had awakened their spiritual energy by themselves. Tang Ka said that they had so-called superpowers like in video games. Tang Ka said that everyone had a resource of spiritual energy, and if Zio didn't cause trouble, he would tell her a lot more information. Zio glowed with happiness, and said that she would behave better to find out more about it. Tang Ka looked down and said that if this was really the Fangxian sex doing, and if they were willing to compromise their master's honor with their dastardly actions, then they should be taught a good lesson. 
After that, Xiao and Tang Kui went ahead. They came to that scary forest where the boys were washing, and Xiao asked Tang Kai why they had to come here at night, since it was only four hours before dawn. Tang Ka said that those who are good at hiding themselves like that guy are most visible at night. After which our heroes went to an abandoned building and Tang Ka opened the door and said that the sooner they were done, the sooner they could sleep in their bed. Xiao looked at it all with disbelief and after her eyes started to be covered with black stripes. After that, there was a shout to not go inside. Xiao's eye changed to a mummy's eye and looked like a cat's. Xiao didn't know who said that. She stood in front of the building and was constantly told the same phrase do not go in there. Zio cupped her ears and assumed that the demon in her body had woken up. After which, Zio's consciousness blurred and she regained consciousness, and the eye disappeared. She didn't know where she was. She saw in front of her the urn in which the mummy was found. Zio started walking towards the urn, after which she assumed that she was back in her subconscious. After that, someone started climbing out of the trash can and a hand appeared. A dark silhouette began to climb out, and Zio was afraid of it. A dried-up corpse with copper nails in its body crawled out. Zio stood and watched all this horror as the corpse stood on the urn. The corpse crawled out and its copper nails gradually began to burn with green flames. Zio stood there and watched in shock. The corpse with a completely black spot on its face told Zio not to go in there, after which it said it didn't want to be locked up again. He said he didn't want to be locked up and then fell to the ground. Zio stood and watched the whole scene. A withered corpse with a long hairdo sat down on the ground, and after that, it started to shed tears that flowed down its hands. After which, Zio was called out by someone. Zio stood there in shock and didn't understand why she was crying. Tang Ka approached her and asked her why she was crying, after which he said that if she was afraid to go in there, she might not do it. A tearful Zio sat there and told Tang Ki that it wasn't like that. Zio said that she felt like she was in her own subconscious and saw a dried up body that had turned into a faceless child. Tang Ka stood and listened to everything Zio said. Zio said she felt like he had been kept in an urn for a long time and she said she felt his fear, pain, and loneliness. Zio looked at him and said that she didn't know why she felt like crying. Zio said that even now, she couldn't stop crying. Tang Ka stood and looked at her with a straight face and didn't understand why he felt uneasy when he saw Zio in such a state. Tang Ka turned to the other side and said that it was most likely the memories of the mummy they had sealed in Wu Zio's body. Tang Ka said that they had merged, so it was only natural for memories to manifest themselves. Zio stood up and wiped away her tears. She looked in Tang Ka's direction and told him to wait. Zio said that he had forbidden her to enter the house. Tang Ka then turned around and asked Zio what she saw in her subconscious. Zio squeezed her hands together and said that she didn't know if it was because of the mummy, but it was incredibly creepy for her to stand on the doorstep of this house. Tang Ka turned and smiled, wondering how the monster knew to get out of here. Tang Ka said that not only was his eyesight good, but his sensitivity was also much better than his own. Tang Ka walked towards the house and told Zio not to be afraid because he was also coming with her. Tang Ka told Tak to immediately stand behind Tang Kai when she sensed danger. Zio looked at Tang Ku and remembered all the things that Tang Ka had said to her. She remembered how he had saved her, how he had said that he was glad that she was alive. She looked at him and smiled. She said to herself that even though he was a narcissistic, selfish, petty jerk, but his words always made her feel safe. And then she ran after Tang Kui and shouted after him to wait for her because Zio was afraid of the dark. She ran through the door and asked if he could slow down because she was really scared. Tang Ka said that he couldn't and said that he was itching so badly to get into a fight with someone. After that, Zio stepped on the floor and it started to glow. Zio sensed danger and said that it was as if someone was following them, but she also added that the atmosphere had also changed. She yelled at Tang Ki to come over to her for a moment. Tang Ka turned to her not understanding what was going on. Zio looked at her leg and said that it was just as she thought. Tang Ka approached Zio, and they realized that they were on an island that was floating in the air. Zio was shocked, and she shouted that they were in the air. Zio looked at all of this in surprise and said that they had only recently been on the ground and had just come to an abandoned building. Tang Ka looked at all this and said that it was simply impossible to fly into the air in such a short period of time. Then he smiled and said that they were probably in another dimension. After that, Zio looked at Tang Ka, and he grabbed his hands and clapped them together. Zio asked what Tang Ka was going to do, after which Tang Ka was covered in half of his body with blue lightning. Tang Ka activated the borrowed thunder rune suppression. Tang Ka stood in front of Zio and said that he was going to destroy this dimension with his own strength. After that, he charged three red circles with lightning and sent them into the air. They were triple glacial bolts of euphoria. They flew up, and our heroes bounced away from it. Tang Ka and Zio watched as they flew away. 
and later disappeared into thin air. Tang Ka stood there in silence and Zio said that it didn't work. Tang Ka was surprised by this, after which she started to get angry and his eyes became more intimidating. Zio looked at him with a straight face and assumed that it hurt his pride. Zio looked at Tang Ka and said that it was strange that his attacks didn't work. Zio began to wonder how their client's child could have gotten out of here alone. Tang Ka turned around and said that they had to go and that way they would find the spellcaster who created this dimension and find out how the boy got out. They reached a huge building and entered it. Tang Ka walked forward and didn't understand what was going on. He said that he didn't see any spiritual energy or demonic energy. Tang Ka guessed that this demon was also very good at hiding itself. As Zio walked, a hand started to come out from under the floor near her foot. Tang Ka asked Zio if she felt anything while they were walking here. Zio said she didn't feel anything. At this moment, a hand was reaching out from under the floor towards Zio. Zio guessed that they wouldn't be able to return if they didn't find the caster. After which, hands with teeth surrounded Zio and were about to grab her. They took Zio by the head and began to lick her face. Zio immediately turned to the side and began to scream loudly, and the hand hid in the same place from where it came out. Tang Ka turned towards Zio and asked why he was shouting so loudly, and at that moment, a long arm came out in front of him and looked at him. She rushed to grab Tang Ka, but the man with a straight face calmly grabbed her hand with his own. Tang Ka turned to look at the hand, which was drooling and pulling out its tongue. Tang Ka was startled and threw that hand out of the way, saying what the f*** is. After that, Tang Ka and Zio stood in front of the stairs, and someone said that they were stronger than him, after which he said that it had been a very long time since he touched the girl, after which he said that they were still delicious. Zio started wiping her face after that and Tang Ka looked and told him to stop talking and bring his ass over here. After that, hands began to appear from the wall. Tang Ka was surprised to see all this. He and Zio watched the entire process. The demon started climbing out of the wall and told Tan Ka to leave the girl to him and maybe he would spare Tan Ka then. Tang Ka lowered his head and told Zio to move to the side. After which, the demon's hands rushed towards Tang Ki. Tang Ka said that the demonic energy of this thing is five times stronger than the mummy that was in Zio's body. The demon started to climb out of the wall and was very long. He had gold studs on his head and some of his hands had eyes. Tang Ka looked at him with a smiling face and said that the campaign this time was not a waste of time at all and he was finally able to find a worthy opponent. Tang Ka stood in front of the demon. The demon said that Tang Ka looked calm. He assumed that the ghost company had sent him here. Tang Ka stood in front of him and told him to stop stalling, as they were in a hurry, so Tang Ka suggested that they start fighting right away. The demon looked at Tang Ku and said that they didn't need to make such a fuss. The demon said that the boss finally let people in, so it would be a pity if it ended so quickly. After which, the demon held out his hand and invited them to play a game. Tang Ka glared at him and said that he was a talker, and that he was starting to piss him off. After that, a hand started to come out of Zio's face. Hands came out of Zio's face, and were about to completely wrap around Tang Ka. They completely captured him and Tang Ka was surprised by this. After that, the demon told him not to try to get out using brute force. The demon told them that if he touched something, his hands could grow out of that place. The demon said that if he destroyed them, the girl might get hurt too, and the demon said that she might bleed to death. Tang Ka turned to Zio's side and asked how she was feeling and if she was okay. Zio stood and touched the hands that had come out of her cheek and then said that she did not experience any new sensations in her body. Tang Ka looked at her and began to ponder, after which the demon approached Tang Ki and said that he advised him to take care of himself first. Tang Ka turned towards the demon, after which the hands that bound Tang Ku began to tighten tighter and tighter. Zio looked on in horror. She didn't know what to do. Tang Ka was tied up and screaming in pain. Zio called out to him, but Tang Ka was still in pain. The demon said that he lied about the girl getting hurt. The demon said that if he had such an ability, he would have attacked all of them long ago. The demon said that humans are really very emotional creatures and then started laughing. Zio looked at all of this and then the demon said forget the important thing. He approached Zio and said that the longer Tang Ka was wrapped in his body, the greater the pressure on him. The demon said that right now Tang Ka was in incredibly intense pain, which might finally shut up his screams. Zio was angered by all of this, after which she clenched her hand into a fist. The demon told Zio that it was time for them to deal with her, and then it attacked her. Zio Zio walked to the side with a vicious look and grabbed the hand that was growing out of her cheek. Zio took it and tore her hands in half. She tossed them aside and stared straight at the demon. After that, the hand that grew out of her cheek began to slowly burn. The demon looked at her in surprise and didn't understand why her aura had changed so suddenly. The demon said that literally from that moment on, she became like a monster. Zio ran towards the demon to punch it, 
then slapped it right in the face. There was a loud sound and a trace of impact. Tang Ka was sitting on the floor, and he was released. The demon flew into the wall and slammed into it. Zio walked over to Tang Ki who was sitting looking down, after which she said that she didn't think that he would faint from such a thing. Zio turned to the direction where the light was coming from and said that while Tang Ka was passed out, she would protect him by using the demon power that was in her. Zio raised her hands in front of her and stood in front of the demon. The demon looked at Zio with an evil look and said that she was finished and called her trash. After that, the demon's hands started to come out of the walls. The demon said that he was actually quite curious about how long Zio Zio could hold out against him. After which, the demon reminded the room with his own hands. Zio Zio looked at it like a demon was filling the entire room with its hands and said that since she really decided to join the ghost company, there was no point in staying behind Tang Ka's back. She recalled all the things that she could already do and said that her body is not what it used to be and now she can skillfully fight demons. She said that the demonic energy of the monster in front of her right now was five times stronger than the one inside her. After that, Zio said that she wouldn't be able to win a one-on-one -on -one bow. Zio looked at him and said that all she could do now was circle around him, and that way she would have a chance to hold on until Tang Ka woke. Zio looked ahead confidently, and then the demon used its hands. They were approaching Zio, and she was setting herself up in her head that she could do all this and she would succeed. After that, Zio became wary. She remembered her tail and didn't understand why it didn't appear. It sent her into shock. The hands were almost upon Zio. After that, she jumped away from them to the side. Gusts of wind came at her, and she didn't know where they were coming from. After which, Zio landed on the ground and her hands were cut apart. Tang Ka came up behind Zio and said that she was doing quite well, then put his hand on her shoulder. Tang Ka looked at the demon and said that it wasn't his style to be protected by a girl. Zio happily turned to Tang Ki and was glad that he had woken up. Tang Ka turned to her and asked Wu Zio if she thought that this weakling could knock him out, after which he said that he was just pretending to be passed out. Zio started to grumble at him and said that Tang Ka was a liar. Tang Ka looked at her with a smile, and noticed that she wanted to work for the ghost company herself. Tang Ka said that it could be considered as a small test from Tang Kai. After that, he asked about her tail, because it was supposed to appear on its own in case of danger. Zio lingered, and then Tang Ka smiled and asked if she knew why he didn't show up. Tang Ka turned to her in and said that when that disgusting hand grew out of Zio's body, he asked about Zio's feeling. Tang Ka said that she said that she didn't feel anything strange, after which Tang Ka realized that this thing wasn't that strong at all. Tang Ka said that she radiated false demonic energy to make herself appear more imposing. Zio looked at Tang Ka and listened carefully. Tang Ka turned towards the demon and said that it was most likely a D-ranked demon, the lowest of all the demons. Tang Ka took a step forward and used the borrowed wind, after which he jumped up. The demon watched as Tang Ka turned a somersault in mid-flight, after which Tang Ka landed on the ground in front of the demon and looked at him with a stern face. Tang Ka asked the demon if he wanted to see what spiritual energy looked like, after which the demon started waving its hands in fright. A few seconds later, the demon was completely beaten up. He said he thought he was just a dumb kid, but just looking at him made it hard for the demon to breathe. The demon couldn't believe that it was even possible for a human to possess such strong spiritual energy. The demon said he couldn't take it anymore and now he was going to throw up. Tang Ka stood under the demon and it started to do something. Tang Ka didn't know what he was doing, and a second later, he fell to the ground. Zio ran up the stairs and was surprised. She said they tried so hard, and it was just the gatekeeper. Tang Ka said that he just wanted to ask him for information but he fainted. Then a man's face appeared on the ground. Tang Ka said that he was very nasty, then added that he wouldn't even be able to run away if he woke up. Tang Ka and Zio watched it all, then turned to the side and headed towards the stairs. Tang Ka said that they should go further. Tang Ka guessed that if this demon was guarding this door, it was more likely that its master was upstairs. After which, the demon woke up and asked if Tang Ka was looking for the boss. The demon said that he really was a stupid kid who didn't know his place. After which, Tang Ka became angry and turned towards the demon. Tang Ka asked him what he said, after which he said that he was pretending to be dead. Tang Ka started flexing his fists and told Zio that he had a strong desire to kick the helpless demon's ass. The demon smiled and said to himself that Tang Ka was easily provoked. Tang Ka walked towards the demon who was smiling, after which he said that his target was Tang Kai's companion. After which, hands appeared from behind Zio and were about to grab her. They grabbed Zio and started dragging him to the side. The demon said that it was very easy to pick her up if Tang Ka wasn't around. Zio stretched out her hand and was dragged away by the hands. An angry Tang Ka walked towards the demon while flexing his arms, after which a shout rang out from behind him.
Tang Ka looked to the side and asked why Zio was shouting. Tang Ka looked towards Zio who was standing there, but now she wasn't there. The demon also disappeared at this time, and Zio began to shake his head, not understanding where Zio had gone. Zio looked ahead in fright and her hands were left in the dark corridor. She didn't know where she was. She went ahead and called Tang Ka. As she walked forward, a demon's hand appeared from behind. After that, we are transported to a place full of broken toys. We see a dark silhouette who was with his toys, whose eyes were red in color. Next to that dark silhouette, a hand came out and she said that he caught the girl as he asked. The hand asked him what he was going to tell him to do with it next. A huge dark shape with red eyes turned towards Ruki. He put the food in his mouth and told her to go free. He said she would stay with him forever. Zio was walking alone in the dark corridor and realized that she had separated from Tang Ka. She said to herself that this building was indeed very strange. After that, she wondered what all these rooms were for. Zio looked down and didn't understand why this demon would do anything to separate them. Zio suspected that he was planning something. After that, there was a girl on top of Zio. Zio looked up and saw nothing there. Zio thought that she was imagining something. She said that she had the feeling that someone was just staring down at her intently. After which, Zio heard laughter in the distance of the corridor and children running by. Zio was surprised that there were children here. Zio ran after them and shouted for them to wait. After which, Zio became wary. I saw the children go right through the walls. Zio realized that these children were souls. Zio was terrified that there were children's souls in this building. After that, she realized that they had come here just to find the child's soul. Zio realized that there might be clues behind that door. She looked ahead and pushed the doors open. She saw a room with a bed and a work area. Zio entered the room and didn't understand where the children had gone. Zio walked over to the bottle that had something in it, then started looking at what was inside. Zio fell into shock when she saw the wolf's body there. Zio was startled and fell to the floor after starting to scream in fear. Zio didn't understand why there was a stuffed dog. Zio said that it was very disgusting and the smell was not the most pleasant. After which, Zio became alert and looked to the side. She turned around in fear and saw a room that was spattered with blood. After that, we are transported to Tan Ki. Tang Ka walked around the house with demons and toys and kicked down doors and shouted Zio's name. He kicked down the door and there was an undead with horns sitting on the toilet seat in front of him. Tang Ka came out of there and didn't understand where Zio might have gone, after which he didn't understand why there were so many evil spirits here. After that, he went ahead, holding the evil spirits behind him like a dog on a leash. After that, we are transported to Zio who was in shock. Zio said that a second ago, the room looked extremely clean and tidy, and now the room was just a horror that was filled with fear. Zio stood there and didn't understand why or where all the strange splashes all over the room came from. She went to the bed and saw a human silhouette there. Zio put her hand over her mouth and nose and said that even though she had only inhaled a little, she could still smell the metal impurity. After which, Zio assumed that those splashes were blood. Zio realized that she could see not only souls, but also long-gone bloodstains. She looked at the wall and saw the painting. Zio said that it looked like a family portrait, after which she assumed that they were the previous owners of this mansion. She looked at the portrait and saw that the man was probably sitting next to his wife and child. After that, Zio asked why the host was cut into so many pieces. Zio couldn't believe that this silhouette that was on the bed was the child from the painting. Zio looked at all this and said that she was very much afraid of this place, and then she assumed that someone was killed here. Zio looked at all this with frightened eyes and said to herself that there were traces of a child's blood on the floor, as if he was dragged here. She looked at the bloodstains left behind and wondered where they led. After that, Zio followed the tracks and said that if she got such obvious clues, she knew that something must be waiting for her at the other end. Zio reached another room and went inside. She opened the door and assumed it was a nursery because there was a bed and toys. Zio noticed that there were practically no footprints except for a small pool of blood on the floor. Zio began to think that the child might have been attacked in this room, and then dragged to the parents' room, where absolutely everything was covered in blood. Zio guessed that the child had probably been killed on the bed, since given how much blood there was, it would seem that the killer had a weapon like a knife, which he used to stab the child and stain everything with his blood. Zio looked at all this and didn't understand what kind of enemies a family should have that they would be able to kill an innocent child so cruelly. Zio then speculated that the killer might not have been human at all. She looked away and saw the diary. She picked it up and started flipping through the pages. There were drawings drawn there. There was a drawing of my father shouting and swinging a knife at my mother. After that, there was a drawing where a man with a knife swung at a dead dog and daddy's secret was written. Zio looked at all this and didn't understand what made her father behave like this and even kill his own pet. 
Zayo assumed that the dog was the corpse she had seen in her parents' room at the bank. Zayo doubted that her father had killed his own child. And besides, why would her father put the key in the dog's mouth? After which, she took another look at daddy's key and secret. Zayo thought about what the secret was. Then she rushed forward and said that she needed to sort it out. Zayo found the knife in the drawer. Zayo said that there were traces of blood on it, which meant that it was possible to assume that it was a murder weapon, and this was useful information. Zayo took the knife cautiously and wasn't sure if the key was in the dog's stomach. Zayo said that she never thought about having to do something like this during a demon hunt. Zayo said that it wasn't important and if she wanted to work for the ghost company, then she should make up her mind and do it. Zayo apologized to the dog and smashed the flask it was in. Zayo went up to the dog and said that she would never do anything like this again. Zayo hoped that it would help her find the child's soul as soon as possible. After which, Zayo cut the dog open and actually found the key. She picked it up while covering her nose with her other hand and said that Tangka would be shocked. Zayo was holding the key and didn't know what it was from. After which, Zayo turned around and remembered that there was a safe here. She found the safe and opened it. Zayo took out the notes and started studying them. After which, Zayo was surprised when she saw a lot of inscriptions with insults and that it said kill. Zayo looked at the notebook and started reading. It said that today was the worst day of his life. I lost everything. The workers raked in everything from the workshop. I want Lai Mei and Yu Yu to have a secure life, but that's just not possible right now. It couldn't be worse. They are my angels, but I can't do anything for them. I'm so useless. The best thing that happened in his life was meeting her and having our baby. I could see from her expression that she was being completely sincere with me. I really neglect them. I only cared about providing for my family, but I never asked their opinion. Only she can help me pull myself together. I love you so much Lai Mei. There is a mansion on the outskirts of the city that we can live in, which will be very nice. After all, then the three of us can live in peace. With this mansion, we can also fulfill your wish by renting out rooms for free to those in need. I took her advice and my life was better than when I was working. The mansion is close to nature and I was able to meet a lot of wonderful kids. Yu Yu also visibly brightened up. It would be nice to live the rest of our lives like this. Not happening. Impossible. Lai Mei isn't like that. This letter must be a lie. She loves me. It's just a misunderstanding. Perhaps this letter was addressed to someone else. She wouldn't hurt a fly. She couldn't have conspired with a servant to kill me. Most likely, the servant is trying to frame her. I should have kicked him out long ago. It's been a month since that servant's dismissal, and her attitude towards her is getting worse. I shouldn't doubt it, but I've been having hallucinations, headaches, and nightmares lately. What if they really had an affair and poisoned me? I started to notice that Yu Yu didn't look like me at all. Hallucinations began to torment more and more often. Some black thing continues to smile at me. That bitch must have poisoned me. I knew it. This whore was having an affair with a servant. Yu Yu is most likely that bad child. Today I killed a dog that was dragged into the house by a servant, and this child threw a terrible tantrum. My head almost exploded. Die, die. Finally. Then they're dead. I killed them both. The old hag at the foot of the mountain gave me the seal. I hope it works. After I burned that whore's body, I killed the child and put a seal on it. Now they won't be able to meet even in spirit form. The geek's soul will be locked up in this damn mansion forever. Finally. Then I can die in peace. The last pages were covered in blood, and Zayo was just in terrible shock from reading the story. Zayo couldn't contain herself and felt sick from this story, after which she threw up. Zayo wiped her mouth and said that when she cut open the dog's body, she didn't feel anywhere near as nauseous. Zayo didn't understand the owner of the house. She began to think he might have been possessed. Then she wondered how he could have killed his own child and his wife. After that, there was a noise from the cabinet. Zayo turned around and saw that the cabinet was gradually open and a terrifying aura was coming out. Zayo looked in the direction of the cabinet that opened and then slowly started walking towards it. Zayo guessed that it was probably her father or a vengeful child who opened the closet. Zayo said that whatever it was, she had a bad feeling about it. Zayo went to the closet and said that if her tail doesn't show up, then she can handle the problem on her own. Zayo said that the probability of it being a demon that created this dimension is high. Zayo looked ahead and didn't understand what it was. Zayo realized that she would have to find out for herself and went to open the cabinet. Zayo stretched out her hand and hesitated. She realized that everything was going too smoothly. After which, Zayo realized that the child's soul had led her to this room where she found many clues, and the cabinet suddenly opened on its own. No matter how you look at it, it definitely looked like Zayo was being led by someone's nose. Zayo looked ahead and said that that demon was able to create real demonic energy, so it's possible that the demons here can hide their presence as well. 
Zio said that such scenes are often shown in movies. Zio said that she was vulnerable, unlike Tang Ka. Instead, Zio said that the only reason she was still alive was because she was being careful. But first, Zio must neglect this quality. Zio looked ahead at the cabinet and realized that it was better for her not to open it. Zio realized that the most important thing right now was to find Tang Ka and complete their mission. Zio said that if she fell for the demon scheme, not only would she be useless, but she would also be an extra burden that would hinder their mission. After that, Zio stood and looked at the cabinet, and something started to come out of the floor behind her. Zio was horrified when she heard someone calling for her help. Zio turned around and heard that she was told that she was the only one who could help him out. Zio looked ahead and saw a little girl floating in the air. The girl asked not to be afraid of her. She said that if she wanted to kill Zio, she would have done it long ago. Zio stood there in shock, after which she was surprised that she was a child. The girl said that she brought Zio here so that she could learn her story. The girl said that Zio might be able to believe her if she did Zio a favor. The little girl said that in gratitude, she could tell Zio the secret of this mansion. The girl was floating in the air and said that if she wasn't mistaken, Zio had come for the boy in the cap. Zio looked at the girl in surprise and asked if she knew where the boy's soul was now. The little girl looked at Zio and said that if Zio could tear that strange piece of paper off her body, then she would tell Zio everything she knew. Zio looked at the girl's body and told her that her body was in the closet, after which she looked at the closet that was behind her. Zio walked over to the cabinet and started opening it gradually, after which Zio was shocked. In front of her was the girl's body, which was withered, and on her face was a paper with inscriptions that were nailed to her nail. Zio stood there in shock and didn't understand how a father could do this to his own daughter. Zio said it was simply inhumane. Zio Zio looked at all this and realized that judging from the diary entry, her mother didn't seem like a person who was capable of scheming. Zio didn't understand what could drive her father crazy. Zio stood there, and in her eyes, the girl's corpse could be seen. After that, we see a hand that tried to resist the people who put the person in the trash can. They put the man in an urn and began to enjoy it. After these memories, Zio's eyes changed and became like a demon's. She took the paper from the girl's body and tore it off. After that, the girl started to say something, and everything started to spin around her. The little girl threw back her head, and then the tears came, and in front of Zio was a cute and beautiful girl who was crying with happiness and thanking Zio for freeing her. The girl said that now she can meet her parents in paradise. The girl looked in Zio's direction and called out to her. The girl saw that Zio's tail had come out and the demon inside her was saying that he was not a miss, after which the demon in Zio's body bent down and said that his name was Suyukiao. After which, Su swung his tail to hit the girl. The girl stood and did not understand what was happening, after his girl was wounded by the tail. Su turned to the girl and said that he was extremely curious about who had the guts to lock him up again. Then we are transported to Tan Ka. Tang Ka walked on and didn't understand why these things were so afraid, and no one was able to tell him anything useful. Tang Ka was walking and yawning. He said that there was a barrier on the second floor and he couldn't get in. Tang Ka basically finished with the first floor. Tang Ka sat down on the mountain of battered demons and said that if Sis Long found out that he let her out of the apartment, he found a job and immediately lost Sayo. After that, we are transported to the forest, where it was raining and there was a loud thunderstorm. We see a man with glasses carrying a baby who was crying loudly. A man approaches a huge building. A man was walking down the corridor, and a child was crying loudly. The man put the baby on a diaper, and he continued to cry. The man left the child and closed the door behind him. There is a hole in the wall where many dark silhouettes with red evil eyes stared at the child. A big rat came out and started screaming, and they came at the kid in a huge horde and started chewing him alive. They completely enveloped the child, and he watched as he was eaten alive. After that, we are transported to Zio who was standing in front of the girl. Sue told the girl that she was now free. The girl looked at Sue and realized that the creature that little rat wanted to hold was the demon in Zio's body. The girl was looking at Zio Zio, who was being followed by the silhouette of a demon, who was completely controlling Zio Zio at the moment. Sue looked ahead and said how she felt. The girl was cut in half and said that she and Zio are very similar, they are both single children. Sue looked at the little girl in fright and suddenly felt an incomprehensible pressure. Sue looked at the girl, and the girl said that the little rat was angry that Sue had dispelled her soul. The girl asked Sue to listen to her before she disappeared. The girl looked and said that he could control the space inside the mansion, and all attacks against him were useless. Sue said that it couldn't be destroyed in that place. Sue looked at the girl, and she told him that he was simply invulnerable. After that, a dark space began to appear behind the girl, and the girl said that there was a way to overcome it. 
After that, hands appeared out of space, which began to take the girl. The girl said that she once saw a hand cover the girl's mouth and carry her into a dark space. Sue looked at all this and realized that the portal was still open when the girl was dragged away. Sue realized that it was for him, after which he jumped into the portal and ended up in a different place. He landed on the ground with a stern look and asked who was hoping to lock him up here. Who? Someone in the distance said it didn't matter that she destroyed the soul. Who? What he said was that he would just devour the girl's soul and they could all be together. Sue was standing in front of a huge rat that petted the little girl and said that before the little girl died, Sue would have to play with him. Sue looked at the rat and told him to let go of the girl, otherwise he would beat the crap out of him, so much so that he would spit her out again. The human-faced rat looked at Sue and said that he hated it when people were very rude to him. The rat said that if Sue wasn't obedient, he would have no choice but to eat Sue. After which, she examined the maniac with a stern face. Sue rushed forward and smilingly told him to give it a try. As he approached the rat, the rat asked Sue if she had been told about the whole situation. The rat put his hand out in front of him and said that he was a god here, after which he closed his fingers in front of him. After that, Sue's leg twisted to one side several times and broke. Sue was surprised that this had happened. After that, he fell to the ground and grabbed his twisted leg several times and started to scream loudly. Rat clasped his hands and said that he was very sorry, but Sue Sam left him no choice. The rat told him to be more docile next time. Rat looked at Sue with a vicious look and said that since Sue didn't want to stay and keep him company, he had no choice but to break all of his legs so that he wouldn't leave. After that, he asked Sue if he still wanted to leave here. He looked at Sue who was lying on the floor and said that he didn't make all these demons stay here to play with him. He said that these demons helped him get into people's homes and get what she wanted, after which he looked at the demon toy that was near the modern food. Sue lay on the ground and listened to everything he said. He said that the boy in the cap who came to him yesterday was just like them. He said that they all feel lonely and that they will only find happiness if they stick together. The rat recalled taking the child's soul and saying that he had food and things to play with, but he said that all he wanted was to go home and asked him to let go. The rat said that he absorbed some of his soul and freed the boy. He looked towards Sayo and said that as soon as she entered the space created by him, he already knew about her no matter how well she hid. The rat asked about the mummy. He said that by eating its flesh, one could increase one's demonic power. After that, he stuck out his tongue and said that she would leave her hands and feet to him and he would let her leave here. Zio started to slowly get up and trembling said that if he wanted her limbs, then let him take them. After which, Zio looked ahead with a stern look and activated her four eyes. Zio said that she was worried that he would already be dead to take her limbs. Zio looked to the side and the mummy remembered that the woman noticed the bloodstains in the room after subconsciously using her four eyes. However, it didn't work outside the mansion. In other words, this demon's spatial abilities can't hinder her, but she can still use them. The mummy looked to the side and realized that he was being overconfident and needed to check if there were any more hidden demons here. The rat looked at Sue and said that there was no need. He said that there were no other demons here who could hide themselves. He said that he would ask again if Sue would accompany him. Zio looked at him and said that she would only need one hand to kill him. After that, her hand twisted several times, and the demon ironically asked if this was the hand she was talking about. Sue started to scream very loudly in pain and fell to the ground. The rat told him to stop being stubborn. He said that killing him now is as easy as killing an ant. The rat told him to just give up, and no one would be able to beat him in this space. Sue looked down with a terrible look, and the rat realized that he would not say yes, after which he said that he was tolerating pain quite well. The rat wondered if he could stand it if it damaged his internal organs, and then he squeezed his fingers. After that, Zio's stomach creased and she started coughing up blood. The blood that Zio coughed up flew towards the rat and smeared it. He was not happy about it. He said that it was very mean of Zio. Zio continued to sit still and cough up blood, after which she said that he was finished. The rat did not hear what she said and listened to her. After that Zio stood up and stretched out her hand in front of her. She said that she was not going to repeat herself in front of the dead man. After which the drops of blood that fell on the rat's body began to move. They gathered in a ball near the rat and after which, Zio clenched her fist and used the six-fold explosion combo technique. After that, a very powerful explosion was heard near the rat. Zio looked with interest towards the rat through the smoke. She sat on the spot and looked ahead after the smoke cleared. She saw a lot of souls flying out of the rat's body. She looked at all of them and realized that these were the souls that the rat was feeding on. Zio guessed that he should have died, but the space around her wasn't sealed, but the entire mansion was still within the barrier. Zio was shocked. She didn't understand how to escape from here even if this thing was killed. After that, a girl flew up to Zio and said that she had already met the true form of a black demon. 
The girl said the reason he looks like this now was because he was a black demon. He ate a baby and a lot of rats at the same time. Zio sat and listened intently to the little girl. The girl said that the bones and body of the child are on the third floor. If she finds E, she can completely destroy the rat. After that, the girls were devoured by a black demon. The black demon asked why they were all trying to abandon him. After which, many black demons appeared. Zio became wary of this and was told not to even think about leaving this place. After which, Zio started coughing up blood again. She looked in the direction of the demon and realized that it was pointless to look for a real form. She said that she couldn't move anymore and her internal organs weren't in the best condition. She looked at the demon that had connected with the others and had many teeth all over its body. Zio knew that everything would be over before she found the baby. After that, there was an explosion under the floor, and the demon was surprised by it, and Zio fell to the floor from this. The explosion hit the demon and sent Zio flying backwards. She didn't understand what was going on here or why there was a huge explosion. She didn't understand why the barrier at the top suddenly disappeared. After which Tang Ka flew up and he looked to the side with a deadpan look and didn't realize that he had hit someone. Zio flew backwards and Tang Ka walked over to her. He went to Zio who was exhausted and said that he had finally found her. Zio lay with her limbs broken. Tang Ka looked at her arms and legs that were completely twisted and asked with a scary look who did this to her. Then a voice came out of the smoke from behind. He said it was him. He started to climb out of the hole that Tang Ka had made and said that Tang Ka had come right to him. The enraged rat merged together with the demon, and it said that it would break Tang Ki's limbs and crush his internal organ. He stretched out his hand and clenched it into a fist. But nothing happened to Tang Kiwi. He was protected by the battlefield that was right in front of him. Rat looked in shock at all this. He did not understand why there was no reaction. He could not believe his eyes that such a thing was even possible. Tang Ka began to blaze with blue lightning and once again asked if he did this to Zio. Tang Ka turned towards the demon and his half of his body was covered with lines and his eye changed. After that, he took his hand and pointed his finger in the direction of the demon, after which a powerful bolt of lightning flew at him. As he neared the demon, a powerful explosion was heard, and lightning flashed inside. The demon was hit and screamed in pain. Tang Ka told Zio that he would not be able to move and would be constantly hit by lightning for five minutes. Tang Ka looked in Zio's direction and said that now it was her turn. He called out to the mummy, and it looked ahead with its evil eyes. The demon screamed in pain as it was constantly being struck by lightning after that. Tang Ka turned towards Zio and said that the mummy's consciousness was sealed and it wouldn't be able to come out of this state anytime soon. Tang Ka asked me to tell him how he did it. Su looked at Tang Ku and said that there was no time to chat about this topic right now. Su said that the demon that was behind Tang Kai was impossible to kill. Su looked at Tang Ku and said that if he wanted to leave this place, then he would have to find the body that he was using. After which, Su said that it was best for Tang Ki to hurry up, as he was simply invincible here. Tang Ka carefully listened to everything Su said and then said that Su was a demon who had killed hundreds of people. Tang Ka asked if he really thought Tang Ka would believe his words. Tang Ka looked at Su with a stern look and said that there is no such creature that is 100% invincible, and if it exists, then it can only be Tang Ka. After which, Su's eyes began to fade and Zio returned to her consciousness. Tang Ka stood and watched it all. Zio was still half-possessed, and she said that once the demon recovered, it would definitely escape. Tang Ka stood and listened to everything that was said to him. Zio said that if that happened, he wouldn't be able to do anything in this situation, no matter how much strength he had. Zio told Tang Ka to hurry up before the circle barrier disappeared. Tang Ka understood everything that was said to him. Then he used the seals and activated the Eye of the Underworld. He began to look at everything that was in this building and see everything that was in this place. Tang Ka stood and concentrated, folding the seals, and then Tang Ka realized that it was above him. After that, Tang Ka immediately jumped up. Then, in Zio's mind, she heard someone say thank you and call her lady. Zio realized that the mummy had thanked her and called her a lady. Tang Ka broke through half a floor above and rushed in. Tang Ka looked and realized that it must have been he, the body of that demon. Tang Ka saw the child's body, which was only bones left, lying on a swaddling cloth. Tang Ka looked at this body and silently told him to rest in peace. The demon suspected something was wrong and he began to burn alive. He was in a circle of lightning and was losing the souls that he had previously absorbed. Tang Ka went down to him and said, return. After which, the demon crumbled into pieces and its head flew up. He said that he was too careless to think that he was an ordinary Taoist. After that, it began to burn with green flames. The demon thought his instincts weren't working. The demon said that from the moment they entered the mansion, it became clear to him that there was a mummy in the body of that girl. But on the other hand, he could not tell who he was at all. 
after which he looked at Tang Ka who was a terrible creature in the eyes of the demon. The demon was lying on the floor and said that its energy was so strong that it couldn't tell what it was like at all. After that, it completely burned down. Tang Ka looked at everything that was happening and a dark sphere began to form above him. Tang Ka wondered if he was still alive or not. After that, we see the blue silhouette of a child who was flying nearby. Zio looked at all of this and became wary. The child was flying in the air and started crying. After that, the girl's soul and other absorbed souls began to come out of it. The child cried and released all the souls. Tang Ka looked at all this and said that the child's soul was always with him. Tang Ka said that if he managed to escape from the big demon, then he should go to heaven soon. Tang Ka stood and watched as the baby cried and stood between the two children's souls. The girl woke up and looked ahead. She looked at the child who was crying and saying that he didn't want to disappear until he saw his mother. He said that his soul was stuck in the back of his mind and he couldn't control this monster's body. The child said that the demon used his soul and the bodies of those rats to become strong, but he didn't have freedom in his body. Tang Ka and Zio watched it all and listened carefully to the child. The child said that now that he is free, he wants to see his mother, and after that, he will return to him the boy's soul that was next to him. Tang Ka looked at him and said that everyone has their own path, and he advises the child to ascend as quickly as possible. Since the child tried to bargain with Tang Kui and Zio using these human souls that were near him, it means that he did not trust them. Tang Ka said that even if they agreed to his terms, those souls would disappear in a few hours. Tang Ka said that they wouldn't be able to find his mother in such a short time. Besides, Tang Ka said that they couldn't know for sure if she was still alive or dead. After that, the child began to cry very loudly and get angry. He said that he didn't care and he wanted to see his mother. After which, he sealed the souls in a blue barrier. The child said that otherwise no one would be able to leave this place. Tang Ka looked in his direction and smiled as he said that he would be very difficult to deal with as he was very bad at getting along with people. Zio looked at him and asked Tang Kai if he didn't destroy his body. Zio asked Tang Kai why the child's soul didn't disappear and how she knew how to use spatial techniques. Tang Ka looked at the child and told Zio that it was the child's evil soul. Tang Ka thought that he had been hosting this big demon for so long that he had assimilated with it. Tang Ka said that if he wasn't mistaken, this big mouth demon was a parasite. Zio looked in Tang Kai's direction and asked what the parasite was. Tang Ka opened his phone and said that he didn't really know its specifications, but he had a signal on his phone, so he could check them now. Tang Ka showed Zio the phone and said that it must be this creature. Tang Ka showed the phone with a picture of the demon and the characteristics were written on it. The search result shows that this demon is able to create separate parallel spaces the size of a mousetrap, but joining other weak souls and devouring different creatures gives you the opportunity to increase your spatial abilities. It can create large parallel spaces with an area, up to 125,000 square meters. They can only be entered at will, and the demon can't be killed while it's still inside. Tang Ka brought the phone closer and showed a picture of a large black demon with a mouth. It is able to harm targets within a 10-meter radius, or the demon will be injured and lose consciousness. The space will become unstable and thus open up a path to the outside world. Tang Ka said that knowing this information wouldn't help them much. Besides, the spatial ability that the child just used here are much stronger than outside the room. After that, Tang Ka looked towards Zio and smiled. He said that he had a plan. He stood up and looked in the child's direction. Zio said that as long as they were discovered, the attacks wouldn't be able to destroy the child's technique. Zio said that if Tang Ka didn't agree to his request, she would be stuck here forever. Tang Ka looked at Zio with a smile and told her not to worry. He said that there was definitely a way out of here. Tang Ka looked ahead and said that besides, he didn't even use his full strength when they were outside. Zio looked at him and asked why he did that. Tang Ka began to slowly walk forward and said that if he had used his full power, Zio might have died. Zio took a look and said that during their first job, she didn't help, but only dragged Tang Ka down. Tang Ka looked at her and smiled. He said that if you go into details, you just helped him. Tang Ka said that Zio lured out the parasite and destroyed the space. Zio was glad that she was able to help Tang Ki and listened carefully to everything he said to her. Tang Ka said that even if Zio Zio wasn't around, he still wouldn't be able to use his power to its full potential. Tang Ka said that if he was unlucky, he would also destroy the soul of the child they were supposed to save for the customer. Tang Ka stood in front of the child and said that his runic bolt technique had seven parts. Tang Ka said that Zio had already seen the euphoria of incarceration. Most of his techniques are wide-range destructive attacks. For this reason, before leaving the mountains, Tang Ka promised his master that he would not use the second to seventh part of the runic rune technique. Tang Ka looked ahead with a confident look and said that this was why he couldn't use his techniques in this situation anyway. 
After which, Tang Ka said that they could still try a purely physical attack, which was a metal runic technique. Tang Ka said that he would let Sayo see what only Master Tang Kai had seen before. After which, Happy Tang Ka started folding the seals and started releasing light rays from his body. He began to walk slowly toward the child. The girl who was in the barrier was wary of this, after which she looked at the sobbing child and told him that he should let them go. The girl said that the child knew that the man over there was really powerful. The girl said that such hype will not help the child at all. The child looked in the direction of the girl and said that he knew that she was just as pathetic as he was, but at least the girl's parents were there for her, and his father left him here to feed the rats and his soul was captured by a monster. The girl stood in shock and listened to everything the child said. He told the child that after his mother saw that he was gone, she must have been very worried about him and was waiting for him to come back to her. That's why anyone who interferes with seeing his mother will die, the child said, and then his body and eyes were covered with red lines. After that, the girl looked at the child with a frightened expression. She knew that the child's malice had turned him into a demon. She looked at him and told him that he was already a demon. The child looked at the girl in tears and asked her not to disturb him. The child said that she didn't understand how he felt because she had a good father all this time. And he didn't. The child looked at the girl and said that he had received the demon's memory and knew that the girl's father was not a bad person. The child said that he knew this because the monster had captured him first. The girl stood and listened to everything he said. She looked at it and realized that the demon was brought here by the boy's father, and after it became attached to the girl's father, he became suspicious of everything and therefore killed the girl. The demon's intention was to turn this place into a haunted house so that no one would dare come here and then he would find a home for himself. The girl stood and watched intently as the child told all this. The reason why the demon forced its master to commit suicide was because the adult could control himself and would not submit to the control, after which he chose it because the child's mind was not yet fully developed. He eventually regained his sanity, but by that time the demon had taken full possession of the child. After that, the girl said that she was grateful to him for telling her all this. She went to the child and hugged him. The girl said she knew there must have been a reason why her father did this to her. The girl said that the child helped her to clarify the whole situation. She stood and hugged him, then started crying herself. The girl knew what happened to the boy's mother, but she couldn't tell him about it, because some time after her father killed her, she woke up and found that her body was a soul and she was terrified. She couldn't leave this place as she was hindered by some mysterious power that was wrapped around the bedroom. After which, she found her own body, and a strange piece of paper on it. She wanted to tear down this piece of paper, since she was scared. It seemed that the reason why she was in this position had something to do with this leaflet. She tried to pluck it, but something held her back and she couldn't do it. Every time she tried, it was like being struck by lightning. Over time, the girl realized that in addition to her own consciousness, she lost all her emotion. She no longer felt fear and did not cry, and almost forgot who she was. At that time, feelings other than loneliness were becoming more pronounced. The girl was sitting alone in the room, and her eyes and face were covered with red lines, and she felt angry. After that, when the girl's entire mind was filled with bloodlust, her thoughts were interrupted by the child's scream. The girl went to the window and thought she was hallucinating, but then there was a loud noise outside. The girl recalled that she could not hear what was happening. She stood up in horror when she saw something terrible. She was watching the conversation between two people. One of them asked the other if you were hiding our son there. The girl asked if the man tried to blackmail her so that she would not tell anyone about it to the officials. The girl told the man that he should give up. She said that if he did something mean, his karma would immediately catch up with him and punish him. They argued very fiercely between each other, and the man told the girl that she was crazy. He recalled telling the girl that the incident that happened to the master and his family had nothing to do with him. The girl screamed and said that she saw a fake letter that he wrote to madam while she was throwing out the trash. The girl said that she grew up with her so she knows her very well what kind of person she is in general. The man did not understand why she tried to quarrel with them. The girl fiercely protested to the man that they didn't have many relatives and she knew very well that the man was watching their mansion. The girl said that now that they're both dead, does the man think he can get his hands on it? The girl grabbed the man with glasses and he told the girl to stop pissing him off. The man said that the gentleman had gone mad and killed his entire family. The man asked the girl what it had to do with him. The girl told the man that she was secretly following him. She told the man that he went to the witch's house in the city and took an incense burner from her. The girl said that she didn't think too hard because she couldn't believe it. The man stood and stared at her with a terrifying gaze. The man said that after the master used it he went crazy. He said that there must be some kind of shamanism. The man snatched his hand from the girl's grasp and told her to stop making a fuss over something trivial. The man asked the girl if she really thought the police would believe her. 
The girl looked at the man, and she said that he was still trying to justify himself to her. She pointed to the side and told the man to explain why he had buried the bodies under that tree after the master had committed suicide. The girl asked the man if he wasn't trying to hide the fact that they were dead. The girl turned in the direction of the temple and told the man that he copied the master's handwriting and transferred ownership of the mansion to himself. After which she said that the man even deceived the student's parents by telling them that they ran away because they were being chased. The girl looked ahead and asked the man how he was going to explain himself when the police finally arrived and found the body. The girl put her head down and said that they treated us so well all this time. After that, she told the man that he was simply inhumane. The man after all these words took the stone in his hands and went in the direction of the girl. The girl recalled after she saw this, a terrible bloodlust surrounded her consciousness. The girl recalled that since then, she decided to suppress it inside her. After this man buried the body, he entered the mansion and never left it again. She recalled that he went with a shovel to the mansion leaving a red trail of blood. The man went into the house and was surprised when he saw a rat. He was very wary of this when a human-faced demon rat appeared in front of him, telling the man to play with him. After that, he ran after the man, and the man tried to run away in fear. The man did not manage to run away, and he was torn to pieces. The girl remembered that those two were supposed to be the boy's parents, but now he will never be alone again. The girl still hugged the boy and after that the boy began to cry. They sat in the boy's barrier and hugged. After which, Tang Ka began to walk towards them while emitting light rays from his body. He walked over to them and stood up. Zio recalled the moment when she saw the children running around the building, after which she assumed that it was an illusion technique. Zio remembered that the children she saw earlier must be from this technique that she used. The child was smiling in the girl's arms. We watch a lot of people gather at the dinner table, including a boy. He laughed and remembered the little girl who looked at all this and smiled. She looked towards Tang Kai who was standing and watching all this and thanked him for freeing her. After which, the girl addressed Zio as a lady and asked him to help her thank this good master who was inside her. The girl said that the mummy that was sealed in Zio was able to feel all the pain and loneliness that the girl had experienced for several years. Zio listened to everything the girl said and was shocked. The girl said that this was why he wanted to destroy her soul so that it would stop suffering so much. The girl looked at her with a smile and the boy took her hand and said that he wanted to eat. She thanked them all for everything they had done for them and said that she hoped they would still be able to meet the people they were missing somewhere in heaven, after which they disappeared. After that, the island on which all this was happening began to shine with a bright green light, and as a result, they left that dimension and found themselves in reality. Tang Ka was in shock and didn't understand what was going on. He said that the barrier collapsed before he even started doing anything. He wondered who the girl was. After which, she headed towards the boy's soul and said that the girl left behind the child's soul. Tang Ka went to the child's soul and sealed it in a ball. He put the balloon in his bag and said there was still a lot he didn't know. Zio looked at it all and lay on the floor. She said it was all confusing, and even she couldn't quite figure out what had happened on the island in the first place. Tang Ka sat down next to Zio and said that they wouldn't talk about it then, after which he asked if she was in pain. Zio lay on the floor and said that she couldn't get up but she didn't feel much pain. Zio Zio looked at Tang Ku in surprise, and then Tang Ku picked her up and dragged her along. She starts grumbling and asks him what he's doing and why he suddenly just picked her up and carried her. Tang Ka asked her if she was going to crawl home on her own. Zio looked at him and said that if there are vengeful spirits in this world, then there must be reincarnation. Zio asked Tang Ka. The two of them went to the underworld. Tang Ka looked ahead and said that as long as demons exist, there are no gods in this world. Tang Ka said that as far as he knew, there was no underworld or reincarnation. Zio listened to everything Tang Ka said and said that if it was really as he said, then she had one more question. Tang Ka told her to ask it. Zio then asked why he was so angry when he saw that she was hurt. Tang Ka got angry and looked at her. He asked Wu Zio if it wasn't obvious. Tang Ka said that he had promised that he would protect her, and she was in such a bad state. Tang Ka said that he would be the scapegoat if word got out that he couldn't even protect the girl. Zio listened to everything Tang Ka said with a straight face. Zio started to grumble and say that she thought Tang Ka was starting to worry about her, and that's why he was so angry, and he was just afraid that bad rumors would spread about him. Zio turned away and blushed. Tang Ka looked at her and asked what had happened to her, then asked if Zio had a fever. Tang Ka said that he had released the child's soul and he should recover from a good night's sleep. The child's father cried and thanked Tang Ku and Zio. He said that he would transfer the money to their account later. Father said that he had treated the young lady's wounds for a bit, then asked Tang Kai if everything was fine. The child's father said that he was very sorry that Lezhai was so badly hurt in the battle with the demon. 
Tang Ka started to grumble and repeated that she just fell down the stairs and broke all her legs. Xiao stood there, frowning as they talked. Tang Ka was in the boys' room and went out with Xiao in his arms. He told them to bring the car to them as they were coming back. My father told them to wait as he had another task for them if they were interested. Tang Ka turned to the boy's father questioningly. After that, the father turned around with a serious look and asked them to help find out where it was from, after which he held out his hand, and on his hand were two halves of beans. 